Everyone has something to share, an either wisdom, story, or logic. And it's clearly amazing to hear all the different missing links discovered by people unique to their own journeys and in how they have come to discover them. Together, we can help to build a bigger picture for a better future for a brighter tomorrow. Let's stand united. Let's remove the veils and let's create a new world together. Are you that missing link? Join Jesse Hale on the Missing Link Talk Show as he helps to unveil the mystery through the unique wisdom and store of others. Three, two, one. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody, here back to The Missing Link. Um, Today, for the uh, third time, I guess, you're seeing um, part of The Missing Link show. We had two scheduled interviews earlier on today. Um, Our first interview... You know, we did have um, with Leo um, Lion Zagami. Um, he was a, a DJ, a music producer, um, you know, got invited into the Illuminati. And, uh, you know, he was obviously going along, getting to know what was going on until they wanted him to do some sacrifices. And that was it. He wasn't interested in that anymore. Um, he went out, his life was threatened. They stole his one and a half year old baby. Um, they stole his one and a half year old baby and, uh, um, they, uh, you know, stole his baby and then he decided to expose them. He's written books about them. He's on chapter number 10. Um, and then we just interviewed Tony Wells. Um, she was Canadian from the sheriff's office, and uh, she came to share her story on what happened with her. Um, tonight, we're going to have an open panel discussing discussing things, uh, what's going on in Palestine. And uh, I've invited one of our good friends who's been on The Missing Link a few times from the Best Damn Podcast Show, John Keane. And here he is in the house. How are you doing today, brother? Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Hey man, how's it going? I'm I'm doing awesome. It's uh I appreciate you guys having me on once again. Yeah, for sure. You're always a bright light here on the missing link. Um just wanted to talk about what's happening. There's a big rally going on in the world on I believe it's uh March 2nd. Um let's see Palestine rally. I think it said uh uh, on March 2nd or March 3rd, that's uh, or March 3rd, so that's this Saturday. It's a big free Palestine rally. Um, Angeline's okay. daughter asked me if anything was going on in our town about Palestine, and uh, I went and I did a little search. Um, I actually searched on Brave because if you search on Google for like rallies and things, they block you know stuff they don't want people knowing about rallies they don't want people knowing about anything that's against them or the agenda so i went on to the brave browser um and apparently there's one this saturday in our town so we're going to bring our quite large puppy and the whole crew of us and we're going to go down and support because what's happening in palestine the genocide that's happening there is atrocious mm-hmm. Um, and I think more people need to be aware about it. So I thought that would be a good, you know, maybe topic for discussion here tonight. Um, yeah, uh, uh, as far as, you know, what, what's going on, uh, in Palestine, I, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, uh, there's been an agenda by the political state of Israel to get rid of the, the Palestinians, um, for, for quite a long time, you know, and this, this goes, you know, way back, uh, you know, to their very inception. And I feel like now this has been kind of like put on the world stage and, um, you know, we're seeing like really, uh, you know, uh, part of a bigger agenda. Uh, if we look at, uh, the, the writings of Albert Pike, the, uh, modern day father of Freemasonry, he was actually the grand master of uh, the the Masonic Lodge in the United States of America before his passing, um, he came out with the writing. It was a a letter to his friend Mazzini in 1871 titled The Three World Wars. And in the Third World War, it was outlined about a social cataclysm. And it was um, this this, um, 
basically political war between uh, the Muslim Arabic state and the, the political state of Israel. And this was to push the people to the brink of uh, moral, physical, emotional, spiritual exhaustion um, to, to basically divide us, you know, and this was going to be used to cause World War III to essentially, you know, uh, not only divide us, but, you know, have Christianity mutually destroyed, uh, the Muslim Arabic world mutually destroyed, you know, all the different religions, as well as the nihilist, the atheist. Uh, so, you know, to me, this all seems like, you know, a, a big setup for that. And, you know, this is designed to polarize us to one position or the other, you know, so, um, you know, a lot of people are very passionate about the Palestinian people. I feel like if I had to, to choose a side, obviously I would, uh, you know, I, the, what's happening to the Palestinians is, is terrible. But at the same time, you know, I do, I do understand that there, there, there most definitely is an agenda with this. And it's, you know, it's meant to get you to uh, involved emotionally to get you engaged to get your attention your energy because this is part of a you know a much bigger agenda in my opinion jesse so why don't we go and tell us about maybe some history uh maybe some stuff biblically because apparently in order for all the revelations to come to fruition whether it was prophesized or whether they're using it as a playbook all the countries, at least seven countries need to turn on Israel. And so some of the stuff that's going on, whether or not, you know, the Hamas was created by Israel and they created this false flag. It seemed like all the guards were down. The army was down. You know, that wall is so heavily defended that if a cat sets off an alarm, you got the army there for one cat. But yet, these people could come in and kidnap people on motorcycles and, uh, you know, do all these things to one of the most heavily defended walls, border walls in the entire world. None of it seems to make any sense except for the fact that they need this to happen. They want to be able to, you know, genocide. I'm not sure if it's part of the biblical prophecy or if it's for the Ben Gurion canal that they want to put through there. There could be, both reasons, either reason, not sure. But what about some like historical facts predating all this stuff that maybe you know about that you maybe you can share with our audience if you do know about the Palestine Israel situation and how it's come to be today? Well, I just, I, I, I don't know a lot of historical facts um, pertaining to just, you know, this particular conflict. But what I do know is that, you know, with like, uh, uh, the, the, the paratroopers and all the shit that they've had. Uh, this was something that Israel has been running exercises for for years on end. There's been outspoken people like Benjamin Netanyahu and many other leaders of Israel against Palestine. And, uh, you know, the way that they see this from a religious point of view is they don't even see them as people, right? Like, so, and we do know that uh, there is a lot of people that believe that uh, Hamas was, you know, part of like a Mossad creation and, um, you know, that this was used basically like we've done here in the United States of America with ISIS and, and shit like that, you know, where we fund people through uh, the CIA, like Osama bin Laden and stuff to set up these, these terror cells and these terror groups because we want to use it for something at a future date, you know, as a reason to to go to war or to, you know, create new laws and restrictions. And I feel like this is just the same thing. You know, there's really nothing new under the sun when it comes to, you know, the things that we're seeing. Um, and uh, the same playbooks that we see run here in the United States of America is run in every country across the world. When I look at uh, Israel, I, you know, I, I, I honestly, I see the most evil country, you know, in, in the world. And biblically when it's talking about, you know, the, the countries that are turning on Israel, I don't believe that it's actually referring to the political state of Israel, which is a, a satanic, you know, state. I don't believe it's actually referring to that. When we look at uh, the meaning of Israel, uh, Israel 
uh, actually derived from he who wrestles with God, right? So um, it would actually mean like, you know, the chosen or the elect, like Israel is not a, a political nation. Israel is like God's elect or God's chosen people. So Jesse, if we're being honest, it would be more likely that you are uh, Israel than you know, Benjamin Netanyahu or, you know, something like that, uh, in my opinion, you know, when we're looking at that. So it's like the nation's turning on Israel. We've already probably seen that, you know, we've seen this one world system, this one world agenda being engineered towards all of um, those of us that are now like coming into awareness and uh, really starting to uh, speak out, speak truth, you know, and, um, that to me is uh and we're being attacked you know whether it was like through the the, the c19 agenda and, and 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 all of that was that was just a, a precursor to what we're seeing now it's like one you know it's a domino effect one domino after the other one knocks down and it's ready for the next and the next and the next and it's like and we're just now seeing uh the agenda escalate to a point where now we're ready to go to like real deal conflict so I like how you put that because the people who choose God, you know, to choose the light, to choose goodness are all truly the real Israelites. And even in their, you know, Judaic scriptural texture, they weren't supposed to create a state of Israel until the Messiah came back anyway. So they're actually going against their teachings. And earlier on today, we interviewed um, Leo Lyon Zagami. Um, which I believe that, you know, he may be have, you know, Jewish origin, like an Italian Jewish, because he was really defending the state of Israel. And he says, well, besides the their scripture says they're not, well, he didn't want to hear the fact that their scriptures say he was like, everybody was kicking them out. Where could they go? Why should they not have their own state? And so he was kind of almost defending that point of it and i'm just wondering what you thought about all those who sympathize with the israelis that they have been persecuted throughout the ages someone posted in the comments i didn't get a chance to ask him says well why are they kicking them all out why are they persecuted? it must be like some kind of reason but what would you say to like people that do sympathize that hey these you know israeli people deserve to have their own place um, you know, because they are kind of not welcome or weren't welcome in all of these other places in the world. Um, I would say that if we're we're really looking at, um, and I'm going to try to be very careful about how I word this, uh, uh, but anti-Semitism is a, a sentiment that has been used basically to get away with murder, right? To, to be able to roll out the agendas that they've done every time, you know, that they have. And, and, and we go back to like Adolf Hitler and stuff, and I'm not like saying I support Hitler or anything like that. I'm just saying, uh, what I believe that Hitler was actually trying to accomplish was he actually, you know, by his study through the occult and we know that the Bible refers to the synagogues of Satan, right? Who claim to be Jews, but are not, you know, and this would actually be, you know, the, the the Israeli people. They're not really the true Israelites, you know, just like I was just saying a second ago, um, you know, that he was actually blaming them for a lot of things that they've done. Because if you look at like slavery in America, all of this, this was actually all done by that particular group of people, whether it's, um, you know, the central banks or it's slavery or it's trafficking people and just you know over and over and over we see like this recurring theme everywhere this group of people is at is where you know the where the power lies you know and we look at hollywood modern day hollywood now you know uh there's a reason that it's controlled by this group of people they are the power center they believe that their blood that their um that their dna their genetics are directly from god and that everybody else is not have a has a real soul they call us uh goyim uh which actually derived from the word golem and a golem i believe is a uh it's a clay figure or a, a clay being which you know we know in the like the the creation myths and mythologies that we are made out of clay or dirt right and it is to be manipulated by someone with the soul so it's basically like something to be used um 
as a spiritual toy or as a fucking living voodoo doll for people with the soul. And that's why you seen when Trump was in office, he had the executive order against anti-Semitism that actually said they were not a race of people, nor were they a religion. That was basically stating that they had godhood, you know, like he was confirming that because he was an Israeli puppet. Everybody knows that as well. You know, and a lot of people support Trump and the truth movement just because they're misguided. They don't understand what controlled opposition is or, you know, they allow their emotions to cloud their logic. And, and, and that's the point of a lot of what we're seeing now. That's mind control at its finest. Is whenever, you know, uh, we, we study trauma-based mind control and how it's inflicted on people, it's like uh, to get an emotional response is to actually get somebody to turn off the logical side of their brain. So we stop thinking logically. We stop asking logical questions. We stop, um, you know, really, uh, we stop really using our critical thinking and we start acting out of emotions and, you know, our, our program beliefs and, and, and all of that. And then when we look at, like I said, you know, um, Israel, yeah, going, they call us. Yeah, I see the comment there. And and when we do look at, you know, uh, Israel, they use this anti-Semitic thing as a way to be able to get away with this murder, to, to away with this genocide. If you look at like the Nazis and stuff, what that actually surmounted to was Hitler, for one, was Jewish. His mother was Jewish, which actually makes him Jewish, right? In order to be Jewish, your mom has to be Jewish. Um, and uh, a lot of those internment camps that they had created then, Holocaust means a burnt offering. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but it's a sacrifice. Uh, if you look at the star of uh, David, you know, uh, which is the star of Moloch. Moloch is star the king of Rempen. Rempen. The star of, the star <laughs> of Rempen, they, I think they call it biblically. Yeah, yeah well, this, it, Moloch, the giant owl god, which is Baal, right? Baal which is uh, the Canaanite God, the bull God, the one they sacrifice uh, children to, you know? So if you look at biblically, these people have been demonized way back then. They've just kind of, you know, changed their stripes. These were the same Pharisees and Sadducees that were fighting against Jesus too, by the way, which Jesus told them even back then, he said, your father is the father of lies, right? You know, who's the father of lies? It's Satan, right? So it's like whenever we're, we're, we're looking historically at any of these things, uh, there's been a recurring theme, you know, this world domination, this new world order, this one world system, because it's to bring about their Mashiach, their Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They don't, they don't feel like that at all. Matter of fact, they, uh, they look at it as, you know, he was just a, a Jew like, like them. And he was a prophet and, and nothing more, which is, you know, totally fine. But that's why they align themselves with a lot of, uh, you know, these, um, uh, uh, what we'll call, uh, you know, uh, you know, re religions like, um, and, and people in groups that are incredibly violent, it's to accomplish their goals. And so when you see all these people that are incredibly sympathetic uh, with them, most of all, they're probably Jewish themselves. You know, that's usually what, what it is, is they're usually Jewish themselves. And uh, you got to ask yourself, like, you know, and I don't want to, like, like I said, like, sound like I hate one group of people or another. I don't. But it's like um, you got to ask yourself if if I'm if I'm part of something, I'm raised up in a belief system and and I truly believe it with my whole heart and I'm sympathetic to the cause. And why am I being, why am I a sympathizer to it? You know, it's like if I know something's wrong morally, but I'm willing to overlook that and then, you know, say, oh, well, but you did us wrong, right? It's like, say with like white people and slavery, if I'm like an apologist for, you know, all white people, I'm like, oh, well, it doesn't matter, you know, like they had it coming, you know, because I'm white and I gained off of it, you know, like you wouldn't really believe that there was something genuine, that, you know, if I was saying it that way. So I don't even know why we take people that are Jewish that are apologizers, you know, or sympathizers for this agenda at serious at all, because we know that they're actually aligned with it in their beliefs. They're aligned with it in the way that they live. They're aligned with it in every way possible. So it's kind of, you know, foolish for us to even consider what they're saying as something, you know, even credible. It's like you, you buy into the whole, you know, fucking distorted, diluted belief system that th these people buy into too. 
you know, you, you grew up the same way, you know, um, you subscribe to the same beliefs and the whole anti-Semitic thing. That was something that was, you know, these Zionists created this decades and decades and decades ago, you know, simply to, to really use uh, as a, a scapegoat or to keep them from being scapegoated for a lot of the things that they were doing. Sharon says here, anyone not in the Freemasons or Eastern Star are referred to the profane. Have you ever heard yes. of that? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. What does that mean? Um, well, the, the profane means uh, those who are not initiated into the mysteries. So um, it's not just a, a Freemasonic or an Eastern Star, but those are the, the prominent groups for uh, the, the Freemasons are prominent for males and Eastern Star for women. Um, those who are not initiated into the mysteries are called the profane because they're less than human, right? It's like uh, the whole saying, like in the Bible, casting your pearls before swine, right? It's like casting, it's, a, it's an animal. They still... They still haven't, they, for one, they don't have the self mastery or the discipline to learn, uh, the mysteries to master themselves, to, to, uh, go through the process of initiation or, or any of that, uh, which is, is sort of a rite of passage in humankind. If we look out through, uh, history, especially like, you know, paganism and stuff like that, all of the old, uh, you know, fables and tales and, and all of that are about, uh, initiation, initiation into manhood, shamanism, any of that was actually something akin to what we see initiation into the mysteries. These things actually go back a very, very long time. This is a rite of passage of being a human. So when we look at like the profane, it's like saying these are people that are they're, they're dirty, you know, they're uneducated, they're they're the they're the masses, they're the useless eaters is another term that you'll hear uh, these people call it as useless eaters, and it's. Uh, because they're controlled, they're, they're, they are the cattle, they are the goyim, right? And that's why you see uh, a lot of these um, these cults and uh, these secret societies and these groups and brotherhoods, fraternal orders. Uh, they are in cahoots with the Zionists as well. A lot of them have uh, the same Zionist belief systems. And, it's, um, and, and if we look at like Kabbalah and all that too, um, you know, it's really basically the same thing uh, without kind of getting into too much about it. It's, uh, you know, outlining the way that the universe works and it's a method in teaching us how to uh, build our own temple, Solomon's temple, which is why you see like a lot of, um, uh, you'll see a lot of the, the symbolism with Solomon, with the Freemasons in particular and, and everything. Um, that they they believe you know the black and white checkerboard floor black equals 11 white equals 11 in numerology it's 11 11 so whenever you see like people uh walking around the the trooper movement or the um the the spiritual movement with the 11 11 stuff they don't even know where it comes from they're just repeating it regurgitating it all the ascension stuff that you hear all the we are one shit, the collective consciousness shit that you hear that's all uh masonic luciferian beliefs as well people just don't know where it comes from but we're witnessing a mass indoctrination into luciferianism and um you know that's been going on for quite a while first they had to undermine all of your belief systems right and that was like the whole disinformation through the cia and then we had the the magus or maga which was the magician trump who came in um the Trump movement, uh, which was to shake things up, polarize people, create extreme division for the red and the blue, the left and the right, the black and the white, right? The solar and the lunar pillars. And because it's about these two pillars in masonry as well. Um, and to get people extremely divided and to that way they would attack each other's beliefs and mutually destroy one another. Like I said, World War III is a social cataclysm. It's not actually like fucking bombs dropping. It's it's more about a thought on the mind, more about or attack on the mind, on your thoughts, on your beliefs, on the religious systems. And it's because they're mutually destroying all the religious systems of the belief systems and everything to bring in a one world system. Right. So the old world has to die. And now they have all the truthers and all the spiritual movement uh, people 
calling for the same exact thing, right? Like they're all saying the same shit now. They're like, yeah, the old world has to fall so we can we can all ascend. We can all go into the 5D. You know, it's like, do you even know what you're talking about? You probably don't because you're profane, right? And you're just regurgitating what you've been told, what's been said to you, you know? Hi, Lori Root. Uh, welcome to the Missing Link um, open panel. Glad to have you back. She's been interviewed with us before, so appreciate. Awesome. And I just before, um, Lori, I just wanted to say something to John. So when you said that, you know, the we are one, um, you know, and, and this ascension and all this stuff is, you know, just Luciferian stuff. But is it, it is. isn't it just the hidden knowledge and we essentially are all one. We come from creation, come from source, and then they invert and pervert things to make it like it. We shouldn't do it because that's the Luciferian way when it, it, essentially we should be coming together as people because we do all come from that same source. Uh, yes and no. Um, so all truths are but half truths. Um, so when we look at, you know, the ascension and stuff, first off, you have nowhere to ascend. You're already up in the heavens. You couldn't even exist down here if you wasn't. So that whole concept is, you know, that's like, um, if you look into the Bible and stuff, uh, I'm not trying to get Bible thumperish on you. I'm just giving you the truth. Um, the whole concept of us having to like, you know, ascend the tower of Babel and go back up to God and all that. That's not even necessary. This whole reality is a holographic projection. So it's being projected from a dimension above. You're already up there. You don't have to get up there. You know, so this whole, you've got to work we're your way right there. There is what you're saying is right. 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 You don't have to ascend nothing. Matter of fact, I think it's called the Spain um s-p-a-n-e it like uh it, it measures our energetic systems right and our vibrations like so a lot of people think like the whole uh peace and love and joy is like giving off the highest vibration the highest frequency but it's actually not true it's actually being authentic and authenticity and being genuine which is what gives off the most powerful vibration and most powerful frequency and people you know so when they get you all acting into this new age stuff you know, the new age stuff is really just to get you to abandon Christianity. And yes, and Gnosticism and things like that, and Gnostic, uh, Gnosticism derived from the word Gnosis, which means knowledge. Uh, occult derived from being hidden. Hermetic means sealed, right? So these are all hidden, sealed, you know, knowledge, truth, you know, uh, serpent knowledge, as a lot of people would call it. Um, so, yeah, these things are truths right but but at the same time there is an agenda with it you know there so is totally like, totally an agenda so i just wanted to welcome Lori root welcome back to the missing link how are you doing today sister i'm doing great i love you jesse and angeline and john everything you're saying is fascinating much appreciated um i you know i listen strongly to the indigenous Americans, the Native American um, approach to um, spirituality, I guess it is, to living um, the natural. And so I was listening today to Standing Bear, and Jesse has had him on a few times. Um, he's from Canada. He was uh, one of the, what do they call it, the scoop? that he was taken from his mother uh, who actually I think died at his birth and then he was adopted out and then he was put into the Catholic schools. So he went through all of that, um, but he teaches, you know, that we are all connected with not just each other. We all share the DNA with every living thing and with all the elements, you know? So I think that part, of that is truth you know i feel that and we see that and what the overlords uh rulers whatever you want to call them the people that um oppress the world and its peoples and cause all the wars they uh want us divided so by any means necessary that is what happens you know 
So I just want to put that in. And then the other thing you said, John, the collective consciousness. I know that was Carl Jung's um, one of his, you know, things that he came up with. And I, I kind of, I feel that also that we have an aura about us and an energy and when we share it and we grow stronger um, and we can fight the evil forces, you know, that way much more together. Right. So that's, I'm going to stop now. Okay. Well, uh, I just want to, I just want to say like, it is true, but it's only half of the truth and part of the collective consciousness and the we are all one shit. That's, that's right. There is an animating force that animates every one of us, right? We call that God. We call that spirit. There's no denying that. But it's also part of turning you into a robot and getting you to release your own individuality. And yes, we do have the DNA of every molecule, every plant, every animal, every everything on planet Earth. But your DNA is not the same as mine. And so that's, you know, like one thing that's not true. Um, and your DNA reflects your electromagnetic pattern or your energetic field, which represents your soul, your individual soul, right? The spiral on top of your head, the fingerprints on your, your fingers, your toes, everything. Those are all because of your electromagnetic signature, your electromagnetic frequency, which is your aura, it's your field. It's the individual of who you are. That's that divine spark, that divine peace. And if they take that away from all of us, that soul right? The Ka and the Ba, right? We have the big soul and the little soul. The big soul is what animates all of us. The little soul is like us, right? And uh, if they take that away from us, they essentially turn us into robots, right? We're without personality. We're without all the things that make us unique and individual. And that's what part of the agenda is. It's like saying, oh, well, there's no gender. There's no sexuality. There's no nothing. It's all it, it's trans, right? Because it's a transhumanistic agenda and we're playing right into it by, you know, buying into the new age airy fairy bullshit is all I'm saying. Like there, there's truth to it, but you have to understand they wouldn't let it prosper if it wasn't serving them. Yeah, I, I see that. I see what you're saying. Um, and I think it's, the reason we all keep talking and sharing and, you know, communing with each other is we're seeking the truth, you know. Of course, and that's really important, I think. And that's why we look to try to connect with as many people as possible, talk with as many people as possible, because nobody has all the answers. Everybody's got their interpretation of what this thing is. And the more you can talk to people, converse with people, you can find out what's in alignment with you and what resonates with you. Because everybody that is really adamant, I'm right, this is the way I know it, you know, but they only know it from their goggles, from their eyes, from what they've learned, from what they've experienced with the boat that they grew up in. That's what they see it as. And if you grew up in one of the bloodline families, you're going to see it a lot different than if you grew up in the ghetto. You know, you're going to be in a different boat, so you're going to see different things and, you know, how this whole system and dynamic works. Right. I absolutely agree. Um, and I think, uh, you know, and, and I don't mean to, uh, like, disrespect anybody's belief or discount what anybody believes, but I just want people to think critically of, like, why they are allowing the content that they're allowing to be pushed to you the way that it's being pushed to you. It's like, you know, think about COVID, think about all of the years past, anything that was worth anything was hidden from you. It was not allowed to prosper. It was not allowed to become the narrative. So why is this being allowed to become it? So that's, you know, that's, I just want to, you know, challenge people to think critically. Exactly. And welcome to back to the missing link, Max. Um, how are you doing tonight and your thoughts on what's happening in Palestine? Um, I'm doing all right, man. Thanks for having me back. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, what's happening over there, of course, you know, the news isn't going to tell us the whole, uh, 
the whole story. Um, you know, when I look at uh, the map, I would say the I don't think anybody's really innocent. You know, I mean, I think that Israel, you know, has a homeland and that um, when you look around it, you know, there's a lot of people attacking. And uh, I think there's a big agenda that people uh, have that is very biased toward Judeans, um, the entire Internet as well. You know, it's uh, a lot of people think it's, you know, crazy. You know, it, it seems like everybody's against Israel. You know, now the people in Israel, uh, you know, if you look at all of the co countries surrounding that, um, those lands, those lands that are uh, Islamic lands were gained through invasion, through rape, pillage and plunder. So if... Um, a lot of people don't realize that they, they don't want to know about history, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm looking at a lot of people having, a, um, you know, a one sided thing on what the media is trying to play, you know, on saying, hey, you know, I, I'm people say, you know, they say that, oh, they're they're being attacked. But really, it seems like Israel is responding to being attacked and um, people don't like that. When you when when somebody tries to bully you and you beat the hell out of the bully, how is the person beating the hell out of the bully wrong? You know, even if they're going too far, it's like, why did you attack them? So, you know, this is what I see. You know, I've seen it. You know, it's definitely a stage, you know, that they that they want to, I think, distract people from. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, it's just a lot of people look at it as they're very surprised that I um that I look at it that way, but, you know, I've read through a couple of religious books, you know, a lot of people don't want to admit the truth when they read them, that uh, there's an agenda there, you know. What about um, the teachings, the Judean teachings about um, Israel is not even supposed to be its own state? This goes against their own scriptures that they're not allowed to have one until the Messiah returns. And so stuff that's going on there actually doesn't even align with their own, you know, with their own teachings. Did you, do you know about that? Yeah. Well, I look at it like this. I mean, the people have been persecuted. If you ever read the Quran, it's not really, there are no angels. You know, it comes from the Christian and Judean texts. It has the same, uh, deities it has the same angels you know michael gabriel raphael um when you look at the lands that they have invaded all the way across to indonesia you know you know what's funny is nobody's complaining about china putting muslims into concentration camps it's only when jews jewish people defend themselves against i the complain attack. about the rohingyas <laughs> I've been complaining, but I've been bitching about it. Like I, there's not nobody, but I like, you know what you're saying yeah. on the mass scale. Now, look, the you know, yeah. people, there's no, there's no Rohingya flags. You no, know, people, most people don't even know about that. What's going on there? Well, what about the Muslims committing genocide on other Muslims throughout Syria, throughout the Middle East? That you know, you're looking at the millions. You know, the the greatest threat that people don't want to talk about to people of the Muslim faith or other people of the Muslim faith that attack them for saying, oh, you're not doing it the way we said you should do it. There's nobody attacking them more than those people. But nobody says a word about it because then it would be saying, well, Muslim people are, the, are attacking other Muslims the most and committing genocide on them. It's when you, you know, and I'm not saying what's happening is right, that, you know, killing is right. I'm just saying it only seems to be criticized when Jewish people are defending themselves against the tax. This is not an unprovoked attack. This is what I'm saying. It's not an unprovoked attack. This is if you look at the maps and you see, OK, they say, oh, well, look at this was Palestine. And little by little, you know, they took the land. All those times that land was taken were because of attacks, response to attacks. If you if you look at your history and you do your history and you even go back as far as uh, before, Israel, you would see that those lands were acquired through rape, pillage, and plunder. 
You know, why do you think Egypt has so many destroyed statues? Why do you think the pyramids are halfway destroyed? You know, these, these are from the Ottoman Empire. Why do you think Thomas Jefferson went and they still have in the United States Army songs, you know, uh, from the sh uh, to the shores of Tripoli? Because they kept hijacking American United States naval vessels. And Thomas Jefferson went to the ambassador and said, look, why do you do this? We didn't participate in the crusades. Oh, it's because their, their holy book says that everybody who isn't part of it is an infidel. So he sent the United States Navy to crush them. And when he does that, then they say, oh, well, America is bad. He's racist. He's this, he's that. Same mode of operations as we see here. I'm just stating the facts. That's all I'm stating. I'm not saying, oh, you know, this, that, you know, stating the facts seems to be uh, a revolutionary act in, <laughs> in times today. That's awesome. We love the facts and appreciate you coming up and sharing them with us. Here's a question from John and Freedom Grower. I'm um, Dick, you know, a very intelligent guy. I'm not sure if you know who he is, but uh, he definitely was happy to see you here, John. Um, he says, does so John see technology as a threat to our soul, humanity? How does he see augmented reality like the Apple Vision, etc., playing into this? Um, uh, actually, uh, I was uh, reading or, or I was actually watching something the other day talking about uh, artificial intelligence and how we think that we've uh, created something when actually all that we've done is we've essentially created, you know, a bottle for the genie that already existed. You know, um, nothing exists without consciousness. So artificial intelligence, AI, technology, this is already consciousness. We're just, we're giving it something, a vessel in order to, to enter our world. That's why you look at like um, uh, the, the guts of a computer, a lot of it resembles, you know, different, uh, you know, sep satanic symbols and, and things of that nature because uh, you know, we are using a black mirror. Matter of fact, we're using, we're channeling using a black mirror right now, you know, as we're broadcasting, you know, our spell, our spellcraft, our words to the sub scribes that are watching this, you know, or listening to this right now. So, I mean, everything is magic, you know, uh, when we look at it that way, everything is spiritual when we look at it that way. Um, and augmented reality, the things that we're seeing, what I, what I do see is them having the ability to, to program not only, and, and we know that DARPA and, and all of these, uh, the United States government and all the governments across the world through AI, uh, you know, are having the ability to change and shape the way that we, um, see reality, the way that we experience reality, because if reality is a projection of ourselves, Right, it's a universe, meaning it's you inverted, right? Meaning like from what's within inside you is being projected outside externally, um, you know. And they can change and shape what you're seeing, change and shape what you're experiencing, change and shape how you're reacting, you know. Then they can they can make you a slave to your own perception, and that's essentially what you know. Perception is reality, so we're becoming a slave to our perception, like uh, the gentleman was talking about earlier telling the facts is a revolutionary act that's because everything that we're given is falsehoods now <laughs> you know and that's because they're trying to shape the way that you know history you know you look at history it's his story right it's not history is really a matter of opinion when you look at it it's like you know we're hearing an account from the side that won usually not what actually happened it's usually somewhere in between you know so um you know, but whatever we believe is is what what it becomes. You know, so they're they're able to shape their narrative. They're able to shape the way that we evolve. Um, and I feel like that can have both good and bad effects on humanity. As far as our souls, I don't feel like there's anything that can take our creative essence away from us. But I mean, you know, if you look at you know, jabs and, and, and shit like that with the, the nanotechnology and how it works, you know, at a, a biological level, you know, I do feel like that if anything is the most threatening, it would be that, you know, as opposed to, you know, augmented reality. All this is a augmented and virtual reality is meant to do is to take us out of the physical world, to take us out of physical connection, you know, because we are more powerful the more that we connect with one another, it amplifies our 
our frequency and amplifies our vibration. It it's, you know, we're supposed to connect to the earth. We're, you know, we are, we're giving off energy and stuff when we discharge when we connect to the earth, we're, we're meant, we're batteries, we're walking batteries. We're meant to do that, you know, as part of the way that we're creating the way that we're made. So the more that they can take us out of nature, the more they can take us out of connection with ourselves and with each other, you know, the more that they can keep us in control and keep us in this consumer society where we're, we're constantly, you know, consuming the, the content they're creating and pushing through their algorithms, you know, and then we have the quantum confirmation of AI, which is confirming, you know, what we're being fed as the reality around us. So I hope that that, that helps. That's awesome. And same question for you, Max. I can bring it up if you'd like, or if you remember what the question was, and then also what you thought of John's response to it. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, speaking the uh, truth is a revolutionary act. Um, we are, we are definitely in a uh, in a mind in a state of mind control. You know, this is like a farm. Uh, the black mirror is real. Uh, television is telling something to your vision, even music. You know, I did many streams on music about uh, it seems to be uh, holding the sounds of some would say demonic uh, possession. And if um, you see yourself nodding or moving or, you know, uh, involuntarily dancing to something, that is a form of control. Now, even if you think that you know, hey, this feels good and all of that. Well, sugar is sweet and it's not good for you either. You know, so um, again, that's why you already know I call my channel American Zombie, because I think it what we see in society is very close to a zombie apocalypse of the mentally dead. You, you try to talk to people. Look, there's three people on the stream. This stream should be packed. There should be people trying to get on. There should be the chat should be overflowing. People should be like, holy smokes. You know, I, I kind of see the same thing. But no, it's like a zombie movie. We can't convince anybody. And all we can do is look for other survivors. Well, we are. If you build it, they will come. And I think that there are a lot of other survivors and hence why we put the work in and do what we're doing. We've got around 100 people right now. The chat is lighting up and, you know, we just started these panels. We've interviewed like five or 600 people. We're going to keep inviting them on to panels one by one or a couple at a time, just so that way we can start getting more conversations flowing opposed to the first 680 interviews have been mostly one-on-one. -on -one. We want to start getting more people, more conversations, and then also inviting people from the audience, hence we have the StreamYard link out there, that they can come on here, ask the people questions directly, be a part of the conversation and be heard. So hence some of the some of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I would say the only true religion is really truth, you know, truth and reality. Um, and nothing against anybody of any religion. You know, uh, I, I understand that that is their faith. That is their belief. Hopefully people can really think about the books that they have been brought up to believe and find the contradictions in those books. Find something to say, hey, you know what? This, this doesn't seem kind of right. Anything that's pitting you against another human being, you know, you got to question it. You got to say, hey, wait a second. Why is this thing doing that? And, um, you know, we trace it back for as far as, you know, like uh, the man said, his story. It's, it's, it's his story. It's not the whole story. It's not the whole story. It's just a, a portion, which is his story. It's not her story. You know, they definitely have omitted uh, any type women's of... Women's voices. They've omitted women's voices throughout yeah. throughout his Totally. Totally, man. Yeah. We have a comment or a question kind of here from Lori, which I wanted to uh, um, ask, obviously, both of you. We'll start with John. There have been many atrocities, wars throughout history. How do you see a way for peace making and the stopping of mass murder that war is being able to overcome? How can we overcome this war machine mentality, this feeding beast that they're going to manufacture wars to keep selling more bombs, tanks, and guns. Do you, do you think that there is a way to stop that, John? Um, 
Yeah, I I mean I I guess what we're witnessing is to me I feel like we're we're on that that way. Um I know this is not going to be a very popular opinion. Um but if we look at like the the law of attraction, part of the reason I feel that we're seeing all of the evil being revealed and things like kind of reaching this all-time high is you know what we call the the hidden hand you know is like pushing um war pushing violence pushing darkness pushing control pushing censorship pushing all of this on us because we're either going to do one of two things we're either going to um you know, buckle and we're going to accept it and go into a totalitarian system where there will be no war because it will be under, you know, complete control. Um, or we will, uh, what was most likely to happen is whenever you're being forced to do something and having something forced upon you, you're going to polarize in the opposite direction. And that's why you see people now like standing up and, uh, deciding to become aware, deciding to become a, a conscious, deciding to, you know, speak out, seek truth, things like that. And I'm not saying everybody's doing it. Um, you know, like uh, uh, your your friend here said, you know, it's, it's not very many. Uh, you would think there would be more, but it is growing. You know, it is growing, I, I believe. And I believe, you know, with people like yourself, Jesse, you know, it's going to continue to grow. Um, it's just probably going to take some time. It's going to take real, not just people like us speaking, but it's going to take them to ha actually have it affect their own lives. And that's what's going to happen probably is we're going to go to a point where we're going to be forced to polarize in the other direction. So, and if we look at once again, that the, the three world wars, that social cataclysm, that's what it's designed to do is to show people um, the, the bloody, you know, turmoil uh, and, and origin of savagery from from religion basically and from division you know to force us in the other direction because whether people like it or not the illuminati the new world order they believe they're creating a one world utopia you know so it's like you know if you whether you agree with that you know i feel like everybody wants the same thing we just all have different methods on how to get there methods they know. feel justified in how they're doing the, this the end justifies which makes them means. motivated feels like they you know are doing the right thing when many others see that as obviously the poisoning the genocide all the other things that they can't see past that if this is wrong ways of going about you know, getting to the place that most people want to get to. Right. right. Yeah, I see I that. What about the same, same question for you, Max? Um, is there any way to stop this current war machine that keeps seeming to manufacture conflicts just to continue on with selling death and, you know, who knows what other agenda is that goes along with that, you know, war, man, war, man, war machine mentality? Um, I think it's 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 hard. I mean, sometimes you have to let things play out. Sometimes you can't do anything but, you know, watch it play out. Uh, for people, the seven deadly vices are a real thing, you know, and as long as people can't control their greed or their lust or their wrath or their envy, sloth, you know, and so forth, um, there will always be war. And you know, I would think the best that we could do is minimize it. If you can minimize it, because like the yin and the yang, right? You're always going to have a little bit of darkness within the light. You're always going to have a little bit of light within the darkness. And you can't, if you eliminate nighttime, then what is daytime? Daytime exists because of the dichotomy with the nighttime. You know, you, you have to have both to understand it. And, um, you know, what we're seeing now, like I just posted a video, right? on my channel, which was shocking. And nobody wanted to hear about it. I called up a few friends. They, um, the House of Representatives in Tennessee want to pass bill, uh, House Bill 1894, which is the labeling of lettuce and tomatoes and other foods that have the jab in it. Now, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is an actual thing that is trying to be put into law to label it to let us know. So food is on the market right now with the jab. You know, I don't want to say the word, but you know what I'm talking about with the uh, 
thing that people were lining up to get. You know, and you can look it up. Uh, you can check it out. It's real. It's not a conspiracy theory. You can see the chairman of the House in Tennessee, the state of Tennessee, voting to pass the bill. And when the other chairman were asking why, he said, well, because when I eat this tomato, I want to know if it has that dose in it, that am I going to be taking too much of the dose if I eat three or four tomatoes? I, I you know, and he played it very well, you know, because if you say, well, you know, if you say the wrong thing, it's going to get censored. So we are living in a time of the 1984 new speak uh, we need to have something talking like this. I call it safe speak. So we're speaking safe speak right now. So your video can stay up, you know, because if somebody says the wrong words, then you either got to edit it or, you know, they're going to, you know, write you and let you know. So with the um, with the war, um, the war machine, which I call the zombie machine as well. You know, I was in the United States Army as a teenager. I served a few years and anybody that was in the army or the Marines or the any armed force knows that it's going to be very hard, almost impossible to rebel against these people. It's like they're using our own muscle against us. These are our sons, our daughters, our brothers, our sisters, our fathers, you know, that are in, you know, it's, it, it, you know, you think, I think about that thing from Kill Bill, the quote, when she's fighting the Kung Fu master, and he said, you are like the worm trying to fight the eagle. You know, what does the worm do? How does the worm fight the bird? He can't, he hides, he looks, his, his form of fighting is being in shelter, actually. And we all know when people say, hey, you know what, I'm ready to move into the woods, into the country and have a self-sustainable house and all of that. You can do that for a while, but they will come. Just look at any tribal people, any tribal people around the world. You can't, that old saying, no man is an island. If you separate yourself from technology, you start to fall behind. And that's when they come with flyovers. You know, we, we look at that all throughout the world like what's happening today, you know, um, it is, it's not a pretty picture in a majority scale, but there are some places that are a paradise right now on earth. So if we can just maximize the paradise and minimize the, uh, the other stuff, because, you know, we want to minimize pollution, you know, everybody, the, the, the happy trails, I call them in the sky, right. That we all see that we can't talk about that doesn't discriminate. That doesn't discriminate. That hits everybody. When a water is polluted, that does not discriminate. Fluoride does not discriminate. It's hitting everybody. You know, um, that's something people need to really think about. I, I, I really, it's a tough situation that, yeah, we could try to sing Kumbaya and hope it goes away, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, thinking and uh and and really uh trying to say okay first of all education is the key to understand that something is happening to you so that's the first thing you got to cuz if you don't even know what is it that goeth said van goeth said there are none more enslaved that than those who falsely believe they are free so if somebody doesn't even know that they're under attack it there's no problem they're like what are you talking about everything's fine you know so and this is where I say on American Zombie, um, you can only look for other survivors. I've tried. I mean, in the zombie movie, do you really see people trying to unzombify the zombies? No, they're like, look, we got to get to the house and board it up. And holy smokes. And that's exactly when I mentioned the food that's been jabbed. Nobody cared. And I'm in New York. People are like, well, you know, and I'm like, holy smokes. One person I knew was like, wow. And he's a nutcase. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, there's just level of nutcase. You know, he knows and he understands. But then he's, you know, on some other nutcase stuff. We all got a bit of zombie in us. We're all zombified by something that we grew up with. And the thing is, is to try to see it and um, try to try to unzombify from that. You know, like we see with certain foods. Yeah. You don't want to eat. You don't want to eat fast food. You don't want to eat. You know, if you're going to get lettuce now or tomato, hopefully those labels are there. I know there's a label for organic, but um, 
we're in a, a very peculiar situation, I would say. So I watched that same clip of that, uh, you know, House representative talking about that, and I didn't get the same thing out of it, I guess. I don't think that they've done it yet, but they were saying that if they do do it, that they need to have it labeled and how is the dose, and they were talking about it. So uh, I'm not sure from that clip that I saw if they're actually doing it yet. They may well be. They're doing a lot of things without asking, without permission. So there's a good chance that that is happening. But that's not what I got out of the clip that I watched, that they're already doing it and they're just needing to get labels for it being done. So I, I saw something different. Oh, okay. You saw a clip, right? You saw a clip. It might have been from Anthony Truth. Uh, 999's channel, right? He has a I'm clip of it. Where. I'm not sure right. where. So I just yeah. watched something oh, okay. and, I, yes, and right. I listened to it and it didn't yeah. seem like they're, from what I watched, that they're already doing that, that they were just saying, hey, if they're going to be doing this, they better be labeling it. They yeah. better be knowing the dosage. They better be knowing well, how it's, it's, is someone, someone's eating. Like they, they, there was a lot of questions, it mm -hmm. seemed like, and that it, that they shouldn't almost be doing it because who knows if someone eats 10 things of lettuce, if they die, you know, how are they going to be held well, accountable for, well, okay. for Th that, right? this? Is, this is why I made the video because I put the whole video that plays out until they vote on passing the bill. And, you know, they say the yay and the nays and the eyes, you know, the eyes have it. So supposedly the bill got passed. There were some nays, but this is where I'm saying, okay, you saw a clip. Watch what I produced on my channel called What is in Our Food Supply, right, on American Zombie, and you will see a 15-minute video, not a clip. And as I make commentary, I pause it because, you know, YouTube, when you play a video, you have to pause it every 20 seconds. Otherwise, you know, the copyright thing. So I comment, and you hear Chairman Clemens making jokes, you, you hear him say, is this on the market right now? And they couldn't answer no. So that implies, you know, by the power of deduction, that it is. Then Chairman Kopecky, who was asking to pass the bill, he says, look, if you have a child that's allergic to this, you know, you it could save the life, you know, because they would be allergic to certain uh, of these jabs. Now, they had... Um, other another chairman in there. I mean, it, it was it was mind boggling to see how they weren't really taking this as serious as it. he actually asked, why do we even need a bill like this passed? The other chairman. I'm like, what? what? Did you hear what this guy said? So if you listen to the whole video on my channel, you know, and I'm surprised other people haven't uh, did commentary on the whole video. I got the, the majority of it from uh TIR 365. This is reality 365. And I gave them credit for the video. I put it in the description. I gave Anthony Truth 999 credit because these guys are coming out with this. Now, Anthony 999, he just played the clip. That might have been what you saw maybe from another channel. But, you know, I implore you to watch the whole thing and even the whole thing with commentary. So it, it really pushes more toward it's out there. And, and all we know of so far, the University of Berkeley in California, they show, you can look up the studies, right? That it is in lettuce, it is in tomato, it is in tobacco, right? Then I showed a study at the latter half of the video from the National Library of Medicine, showing that they've been working on this since the 80s for 40 years. So to think that that's not on the market after 40 years, I would say is giving the benefit of the doubt to the machine. Thank you so much for bringing that, you know, an awareness and for doing that for the people. Did you want to respond to that, John, before we move on to the next uh, topic? Um, I was just, I, not really, but I'll just add that um, back before they even started the jab uh, in Mexico, they were already um, trying to grow tomatoes and stuff with that shit in it. So this has been going on for years now. So I just want to agree with uh, uh, the gentleman uh, on the panel. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to ask you guys is that do you think that with all the chemical manipulation 
you know, in the air, the water, that this is an augmented reality. This isn't the actual way that it's supposed to be. Or do you think that this is playing out like it's supposed to and we're just, you know, passengers on this ride opposed to, you know, being able to drive and stop a ship that seems to be on a crash collision for destruction? Hmm. You mean like with, you know, all of the, the chemtrails and the, the radiation and, and all the things that we're experiencing? Chemicals yeah, in our food, chemicals in our water, chemicals in the air, everybody, hormonal imbalances, pesticides, preservatives. It seems like there's a lot of hormonal imbalances. We've got a lot of guys thinking they're girls and girls thinking they're guys. And, you know, we got all this weird shit that's going on. Is this like an augmented reality that things shouldn't be like this? Or is this just the way things should be? And let's deal with it and just try to fly by this, you know, the reality the best we can because it was meant to be this way. Um, I, I honestly, uh, I'm not sure because I've never lived through the end of one of these cycles. But from what I can tell, like through you know, ancient texts and mythologies uh, from, you know, a, a historical point of view, things always seem to get really fucking weird whenever we get towards the end of an age. And it's because uh, the energy shift, we have to remember that astrologically we are leaving the age of Pisces and going into the age of Aquarius. So we're going in from an age of a water element which Pisces has to do with Jupiter, which is religion and dreams and spirituality. And it's the two fish, which represents duality. So we're seeing all the religious systems lose their power. We're seeing everything, right? And now we're going into an Aquarian age, which has to do with technology. Uh, it's about the collective, right? Um, it's a social structure. So we see the reorganizing social structure. So I honestly feel like this is a natural changing of the guard as far as uh the cycles it seems unnatural because the way it, it appears to be being forced on us right and is this reality you know are we just now because our consciousness is altering or shifting in some way are we able to to see that it is a simulation now and we weren't able to see it before because it was more what we would call a natural simulation when it was just you know, trees and things like that. But, but if we're, if we're being totally honest with ourselves, everything that we are seeing, witnessing and experiencing is a projection from, you know, within our ourselves anyways, whether we collectively are creating it, having a shared, you know, collective experience or, or what, um, truthfully, you know, nothing here is, uh, is not, you know, made out of spirit or made out of uh, consciousness. Everything, you know, originates from that. So there really is nothing that's truly artificial. If you think about it at all, you know, it's all coming from, from spirit at the end of the day. You know, it's all coming from, from there. Uh, whether it's organic or not is, a, is another thing. But yeah, I feel like this is a natural progression because we're seeing one age end. And yes, it's, it's being pushed on us by by humanity, but what's actually propelling us towards doing that? I feel like it's the changing of the astrological energies that are, you know, altering the way that we we uh, experience reality and altering our desires and the way that we're moving forward. So that's my opinion on that. Awesome. Thanks. And welcome to the Missing Link Live Open Panel here, Jack. Um, your input's always appreciated. Um, just to let you all know, in any open panels we have, you're free. Feel free to stream to your platforms if that's you know what you feel like doing. You don't even have to ask. Open platforms are free to stream if that's what you feel like. Um, and I wanted, did you hear that question I just asked, or would you like me to repeat that, Jack? Because I'd like your input next. I don't remember exactly how you how you asked it, but what I took from the question is kind of what do we do? <laughs> is that right? Um, well, no, you know, the question was, do you think that things the way they are right now with the genetic manipulation, chemical manipulation, the manipulation, um, hormonal imbalances, pesticides, plastics, preservatives, the way yeah, guys are thinking they're girls, girls thinking they're guys, everything is kind of off kilter and balance. Is this an augmented reality 
or is this just the way it was supposed to be for us to be able to wake up at this time? I think like uh, that uh, John was saying that, you know, that at the end of times, it just has kind of happens like this to, to get us. So do you think that it, this is not the way it's supposed to be? Or do you think that we are living in a time and it's supposed to be like this in order for us to pull up our big boy pants and, you know, actually do something about it opposed to, you know, uh, this is just, you know, sitting by and just letting it happen because it's supposed to be like this. I love the question. And my answer, I think it's a little bit of all, it's a little bit of everything. It's, it's a perfect order. We are a part of a perfection and the perfection is the order that brings everything brings time forward and <laughs> so i think part of it is by a natural design and a natural shift humanity has evolved in the way it has organically and inorganically right we've kind of pushed ourselves away from what mother nature really offers but it makes sense and and here the question is it supposed to be i spent a lot of my life saying things are not supposed to be this way or should be this way or shouldn't and what i realized eventually my opinions don't matter things are the way that they are and so now what do we do with the way with things the way that they are because we're learning about a lot of this manipulation and the toxicities and the chemicals and the energies and all of this. It's not helpful for our growth and development. I think we're alive. We're alive at a time where by a greater purpose, people are awakening. And I think this is the shift. And we're here to break away from the old ways and to bring in the new ways together. I'm pretty optimistic about the future because we're a part of it. Same question for you, Max. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly think um, it's like a farm, you know, it's like a farm and, you know, the sheep on the farm how do they rebel against the farmer? They're basically happy to get feed just the way we're happy to get food. And, um, you know, we might not be like sheep, but we might be more like a little bit of a, of a sentient uh, understanding that we're in the zoo. Um, but we're at such a disadvantage. It's like when you see something being uh, sprayed in the sky or poured in a river, it's like a giant seeing a, a 50 foot giant pour something into the river or spray something across the sky. How do you fight that? How do you fight a 100 foot giant made out of metal? You know, which when you look at native tribes of all people around the world, the first native tribes they had to subjugate to get what we see now being built were the pagans of Europe. The, the the Christians totally uh, subjugated the Vikings by with a book. They couldn't beat them with the sword. And they said, look, when you come here and you raid France and you kill 5,000 of our warriors and you're sailing away with our treasure, you're seeing 500 of your warriors get hung on the docks. So, yeah, you kill 10 to 1. But I'll tell you what. We will just give you the treasure if you just convert to Christianity. And they did that. And within 200 years, the Vikings fell without using a sword. So when you look at this, uh, see, and, and you don't see Vikings crying and complaining the way you see with the Palestine shit. You know what I'm saying? Palestine fell without them. They were just like, look, they had other people fight for them. Look, we're, we're, you know, now, of course, yeah, they have a military. We we back that. But if you look at the United States foreign aid, we give more money to Muslim countries than we do to Israel. And within the last year, look at the foreign aid. We give over a billion dollars to Jordan 
We give close to a billion to Egypt. We give to Tunisia. We give to Pakistan. We give to Morocco. We and, and this is another thing. Nobody talks about Saudi Arabia, where Islam comes from, supporting Israel. Where, where you know, you know, they get quiet with that. They get quiet with that. So because that's where all Muslims are are inspired to go or told to go through the Quran at least one time in their lifetime. They should visit Mecca. So why don't you listen to what they're saying and stop attacking Israel? You see, you don't hear that. You don't hear that because it's an agenda. See, when you think about it, you say, wait a second. Yeah, why? They don't like to talk about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia says themselves, like, look, you can't trust these other countries. That's why they don't let them immigrate to their countries. Muslims only migrate to Christian countries to destroy them and turn them into the countries that they ran away from. If, if you really look at that, one of my friends thought, he goes, you know, I never thought about that. I know you don't think that's why Poland is doing the right thing. They're saying, no, we're not. Uh -uh. Our streets are safe. Look at Sweden. Look at how rape went up in Sweden. And what do they want to do? And this is not all Muslims. You have very you have people that are good, decent people that are, are of the Muslim faith. The Albanians that help hide Jewish people that needed refugee from the Nazis. People don't talk about that. The Albanian Muslims. Hiding Jewish people, protecting them, giving them new identities. And the Nazis were putting propaganda out like, oh, if we catch you hiding them. You got good people in all faiths. So when somebody tries to say, oh, well, it's these people. Look at how small Israel is and look at what surrounds it. Twenty two Muslim countries. But you're telling me Israel is the problem. And they got attacked, you know, and now they've had it. This is the fourth or fifth time they've been attacked. One time they were attacked by Lebanon, Egypt, uh, and, and Jordan and Palestine combined, and they whooped that ass. And that's why they took a little more land. This was back, you know, in the 19th century, in the 20th century, you know, 1900s. But people don't like to, to, to look at that and say, wait a minute. So they were attacked? Yeah, because they never wanted them to have anything. So if you really do your history, I'm not saying that you're going to see who the real bad guy is because, you know, I don't like to throw the fault. But when you really look at I tell somebody, you you really like Palestine, move to a Muslim country, then M move there and practice Judaism or Christianity and see how you're treated. You know, I don't agree with everything Churchill says because he's done some atrocities, but he made a good point. He said, when Muslims are a minority, minority rights are the main thing. When they're a majority, minority rights don't exist. And, and if you look at, at what is going on in London, trying to bring Sharia law, nobody wants to talk about that, right? That's what the Palestinian distraction is about. And I'm not saying, again, that killing and all of that is right. I'm just saying, OK, why is this really happening? Let, let's go to the root. If, if somebody came and attacked you, you know, and then took people, you know, and then you just went on the rampage and went straight Charles Manson on them, I couldn't blame you. I couldn't blame you. And people would say, oh, well, why is he doing it? Well, did you see what they did to his family and kids? And now that he's going straight 100 percent Charles Manson, Paul Bunyan on you now, he's bad. No, I'm not. I don't have nothing to do with stopping that. I, I, I don't agree with uh, the taxes and all of that because that comes from the people, you know. But then again, how do we stop this machine? Like addressing the question, is this, you know, I don't think anything is just meant to be. You know, it's like I said, the giant pollutant. How do you stop that? You know, we seem to be like laboratory animals that are just watching this unfold because who we're, we're we're comfortable slaves comfort is our new cage man it's a deception right comfort is a prison people's comfort zones become their comfortable prisons and then guess what then we live in this illusion of comfort and safety when as our choices and our options keep limiting the this political structure is a bunch of nonsense. The divisions, the wars that are going on, as long as we stay divided, we will remain governed and ruled. I think this is the time for us to unite, to join together, and to start, to start demanding the end, the end of the wars, the end of the violence, the end of the corruption. 
your thoughts, John, on what uh, Max? It, I, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would agree that it's, I just think, it's hang on. Fine. I'm just going to grab some tea so you guys just keep chatting. Keep. I'm just going to put some hot water in my cup so you guys just keep doing your thing. Well, I, I, first off, I think uh, Max has brought up some really good points. I mean, and I feel like because, uh, and I'm not pro-Israel or pro-Palestine, I really could care less about, you know, either either side. I feel like I'm being, you know, lured into um, to, to choosing, you know, the lesser of two evils when it, when it comes to that. Either way, they both have agendas, you know, whether who's the victim or not. Um, they're both killing people, so... Uh, you know, but I feel like Max brings up really good points. You know, if, um, you know, if, 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 if what do you, if, that's assuming that, that, that Palestine isn't actually being controlled by Israel, which, you know, that's what I feel like a lot of people tend to side with Palestine is because they feel like it's being, uh, you know, and I'm not pro Palestine either, but I'm just saying, I feel like a lot of people try to, you know, tend to gravitate towards that because they feel like it's, um, you know, like a, a Mossad operation to, you know, to demonize a country so they can attack it. Or, you know, at least that's, that's a narrative that's, that's pushed by a lot of people that do support Palestine. And I agree with uh, Jack as well, you know, saying that, you know, we, we really do uh, need to come together. But the problem is that people can't get past their differences. They can't get past you know, uh, the, the things that they see differently in order to come together. And it's like people can never get past themselves. It's like until something affects a person directly, they usually don't have enough passion or enough give a fuck to, to actually do anything about it. You know, it's like you can it's a very rare few people that even care to to, to sit on a, you know, sit in a, a, a video chat right now and, and watch something like this being discussed, let alone put their face on it, their voice on it, put their time, money, energy, and effort into standing up for something or, you know, speaking out about something or trying to change something or being active when it comes to making a change. You know, a lot of people are very comfortable in their lives and they don't want to rock the boat because they, uh, you know, they, they are comfortable in their slavery. Yeah, yeah, it is a form of comfortable slavery, man. John makes a good point. Um, and I would say, look, you know, um, just uh, somebody, they want you to take a side. They, they want you so they can attack you. So they can say, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm saying to myself, it's like, wow, these are the zombies. These are the zombies. You cannot argue with the zombies. You could say, look, let's assess the situation, what's going on. Um, Really, we, we should really be saying, wait a minute. So you're telling me I don't have a choice in giving money to they're just taking any tax that when I work and you pay tax that nobody cares about that. You see, that's the thing that nobody. New York just got in one hundred and twenty thousand immigrants. New York City has ninety thousand homeless people. They just showed you that they could have solved the homeless problem in New York City and refused to. Nobody even thinks about that because they're zombified. I'm saying, wait, they're they're giving fifty three million dollars in debit cards. This is like it's really some ridiculous stuff. The zombie that's in office. I mean, if the voting right, if voting like Mark Twain said, if voting worked, it would be illegal. You know, do you really think <laughs> do you really think a government that genocided the native inhabitants are going to let you just vote them out of office? You know, if you do, I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. You know, it, it just I, I really look at people and I say to myself, this is serious. You the average person is basically a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee is actually smarter because a chimpanzee knows not to pollute the air, the water and the land. You know, I mean, even the natives were saying of tribes, look, if we got beef between us, let's not. The river has nothing to do with that. Don't poison the river. You know, so we can have whatever problems we have. But you leave this stuff for the next seven generations. People do not even care what their grandson's grandson is going to grow up in. They, they don't care. I had a guy tell me, oh, well, you know, I was making money during this guy when he was in office. Yeah, really? What about your grandson? You have a son. What about his grandson, if you can even fathom 
you know, that he might have a son. What about his grandson? So that's your great, great grandson. They don't even think, and that's not even seven generations. That's not even seven, gen, that's four. So you think of another three, your great, 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 great grandson. This is how mentally inept the average person is. It's like talking to a goldfish. Jack, do you think that we have a tax problem? Do we have a funding problem? You know, with what Max was saying, they give a billion dollars to Jordan, a billion dollars here, a billion. They're funding all of these different places while Americans suffer. There's people that are suffering. There's people that are homeless. There's people that are starving. There's people that are living on poverty, living on food stamps, barely being able to, you know, survive inside of america but yet all of this money seems to be flowing to the defense contractors to nasa to you know the uh, uh israel to all these other countries uh, you know jordan and all these other places like in my country they gave 50 000, 50 000, 50 million dollars or something for gender studies in africa gender studies in africa was funded by the canadian government so do you think that what, where does this problem lie? Because obviously the money situation has become way crazy. Taxes and not a balance giving money everywhere else except for helping its own people. I think it's a spiritual problem. And until the spiritual problem is addressed, people will not care about what is true. And people suffer due to truly due to ignorance due to misinformation and lack of information. That's what's keeping the world going. The money, what some of these things of paying Im immigrants, funding this, funding that, dude, it is a distraction. Money's not the answer or the problem, not in, its, uh, not in itself. What we've really got is we've got a spiritual issue. People have forgotten how to care about each other. I just got it, but I agree with that shit. Hey, Joe. Yeah, totally. Hey, when... Go ahead, Jack. Part of the conversation, too, was about what are people willing to do? And I tell you what, this, vet peace, veterans for peace, that is the only thing I stand for anymore is peace. I'm not standing veterans for peace. Oh, I'm sorry. I was one of you cats up from veterans for peace. I no, he was pointing to his badge on his chest, I think. My chest, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. That's what this is, is the emblem for that. Oh, yeah. And I don't pick sides anymore, America or otherwise. I just, I care about what is, what's going to bring peace to our world. Well, Jack, you know that Veterans Day was originally called Arms, Armistice Day, right? And, and it Correct. was to, to honor not having war. You know, saying, look, we're going to have Armistice Day, right? I but don't they, know that. Yeah, they, they, if you look it up, it's definitely, it was Armistice Day, meaning this is a day to declare that we shouldn't have war because of what have happened to the veterans, right? Yeah. They changed that to Veterans Day. And of course, they did the new speak to say, oh, no, you know, honor the veterans. And, you know, they fight for us and this to, to, to get people to become patriotic zombies. Yeah, it took on a different kind of, uh, connotation once you yep. do that, yeah. And that's yeah, it goes from the heart, which is what Jack was talking about, to something else. Yeah, and I mean, Veterans for Peace, you know, I've seen guys try to protest outside of the VA, outside of the recruiters. Um, remember, they, they use our own muscle against us. I was in the Army. When you're in there, if you go to disobey orders, you'll have 500 rifles turned on you. You'll be court-martialed and executed with the firing squad. They told us, if you go desert during wartime after 30 days, they're not trying to, to give you a court. It's the firing squad. And, and you know, this is recent. You know, I was in only a, a few decades ago. And, and, you know, it changed a lot. So people don't understand that we are subject to the UCMJ. Uh, the United States Military Code of Justice. Yeah. You know, we are not a uh, civilian when you're in there. Right. Um, this is some, this is a brutal awakening. 
that people don't know. They don't understand the laws that bind them, the physicality. You know, they think gold backs money when it's backed by lead and gunpowder. You take our money or you'll get executed. Yeah. Saddam that's, Hussein, that's why, uh, that other guy, I think, when they, everyone who tried to change the gold, uh, the oil uh, currency uh, from the U.S. dollar to Libya, uh, Saddam Hussein, right? you He's see what happened. Yeah. Anyone who's tried that got killed. Well, that's the American military is the, you know, the muscle behind the banking cartel. You know, they have the religious part of it out of the Vatican. You've yes. got the financial part out of England. You've got the military might out of America. They separate it into three different branches, you know, to make it not so tyrannical looking. Yes, yes. Well, that's the, the Babylonian system. It's the three pillars of, of Babylon. You have the Vatican, which is the religious pillar. You have Babylon. London, which is the financial pillar, and then you have uh, Washington D.C., which is the District of Columbia, and uh, that's your, uh, you know, your military just, pillar. Your strength, yeah. One thing that I heard. Babylon, London. <laughs> I never heard. <laughs> and one thing I heard recently is that, and it makes sense, and I wonder what all your opinions on this were, is the fact that, you know, taxes, as you know, supposed to be voluntary, but they're collected in order to make people feel that they're part of the government because they don't actually need the money. It's just printed out of nothing anyways. They always have money for the wars. They have always money for this. Always they can print any kind of money. They don't actually need the tax money from the people, but it's basically to have people feel like that they're important, that they're part of that system, and that's why they're collecting these taxes and i just want to know what your thoughts are you, the, you, the first thing out of your mouth was it's supposed to be voluntary i'm not so i, I wasn't aware that that was necessarily true i thought that once you agree into the system the, the involuntary shit goes out the door it's like do enter in the military you agree to certain things and taxes well, man, at, but at the beginning like so the way the government apparently ran right now this is all obviously hearsay i wasn't you know here a hundred plus years ago, but um, one of the, um, uh, I guess one of the ways that the people held the government accountable was that when they wanted to go to war, they issued bonds, they issued these things. And if people bought those bonds for that war, it showed with their purchasing power, their dollars, they agreed with that war, they agreed with that, you know, whatever they want the government to fund it. So it just held the government, you know, in check that they couldn't just do anything without the people's say by them voting with their dollars. And then once the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, it cut out the people. And then now they could actually print money so they could do whatever they wanted without actually the people behind whatever that, you know, that thing that the government ended up wanting to do. I get it. That's dope, smart. But even, yeah, even you're, you're talking about the war bonds and, uh, uh, you, you're, you're right. If you, if you, if, first off, that's like a spiritual contract for one, if you get the people to, um, you know, to, to pay into something, they're giving their consent to, to be ruled over something. And another thing is uh, taxes is how we accumulate the national debt. Technically, um, whenever you're born, your social security number is a bond number. It's like a bond that's put on you and they borrow the amount of money that you uh, will, uh, you know, allegedly pay over your lifetime. So every time a new person is born, that's why they're always big about the birth rates and immigration. And that's why the United States was like the land of all different peoples is because that allowed them to be able to borrow more and more dollars. And now it's just, you know, they don't even care. It's, it's even beyond that, but that's how a lot of that stuff got started. Uh, and I didn't mean to cut you off, Max. Go ahead. No, no, it's cool. Um, I want to know, I'm not sure if they had war bonds for the Civil War. I think the Civil War, uh, they were going into debt and they didn't actually pay soldiers. It was like a, a debt card. And they actually were, you know, a lot of guys got um, a lot of guys got stiffed, you know, and this is also why you have a lot of looting during war. Um, the Civil War. If I'm correct, more Americans died in that war than in all of the other wars combined. 
A lot of people don't know that. It was kind of like a population control thing. And till this day, people have genetic memory of that. And, and they still, um, it's trauma. Like somebody had said, all veterans have like some type of trauma. And we do. We do. I mean, you go through training. We don't know if we're Manchurian candidate. You know, how do we know if we're not Manchurian candidate? You know, that what they did to us sleeping in basic training and AIT and permanent duty, you know, we, we really don't know. We, the experiments that they do on people that we know is already, you know, look at Tuskegee is just the tip of the iceberg. Tuskegee never stopped. You know, I showed on one live stream the patent for the chemical fog misting device the cloud making device, the patent is from 1920. You know, this is, and, and, and the patent number, the United States patent number, everything, anybody can look this up. It was filed in 1917 and they were given the patent two years later, two and a half years later. You know, so all you got to do is really do your research. But then again, who are we telling? The zombies? We're, this is how bad the situation is. It's zombie apocalypse of the mentally dead, and it's getting worse. Try to talk to somebody that's 25 and see if they care. You know, and then if somebody's hungry, we think about ourselves, right? <laughs> we don't want to eat uh we, we don't want to eat lettuce that's been jabbed up with the magic potion, right? Or tomatoes. But if you're starving, can you really discipline yourself not to eat that tomato? You know, when you are under stress, it really shows what you're made out of. This is why when, you know, we've been on other streams and I poke people, mess with them to see what's inside, to see how you react. And I say, your reaction tells me more about anything I could say to you. My reaction will tell somebody more about anything. If somebody says something and I'm like, oh, well, you know, whatever, you know, or if they get attacked, you know, oh, what are you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, if you don't believe it, fine, fine. You know, there's a difference between a belief and a fact. I think we, we got into that a couple of streams ago. And finally it came to, hey, if it's a belief, a belief is what, you know, an opinion is what, it's not fact. You know, and, and this is uh, people, people aren't thinking, man, we're, we're the few survivors in the zombie apocalypse. And we ourselves are trying to prevent from going back into the state of zombification that we had when we were younger, because we definitely know that we were when we were 20 or 15, we were definitely zombie on something. You know, we were ready to eat McDonald's and all of that stuff. I was I was fast food zombie. Fast food zombie, man. And I can still be a fast food zombie again. And the only thing that prevent, prevents that is my discipline. But if I'm starving, you know, and you start to say, man, have I disciplined myself enough to eat carrot sticks and water for a month or something, you know? And you wonder, you really, it shows you what you're made out of. What do y'all think about, you know, our birth certificate name, our corporate slave name, that if everybody stopped using it, they couldn't identify us. They couldn't be, you know, we could, we wouldn't How be do you in stop that using position. Your name, that, that wouldn't be in the position if we didn't use that identification card that the governments give us to tell us who we are and to be able to identify us if they ever come into contact with us. Are you saying no driver's license, no social security, no banking shit, uh, no nothing with your name on it? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying the corporate slave name in the essence of how it is, right? You could. You say, how do you not use it? And this is the part. How do you not use the corporate slave name? When does that apply? When is it different than using your name and small print or whatever the difference is how does you change that i mean i'm, I'm aware of some of the arguments uh, but not using it i'm not sure that's the thing if you're still going to be dealing with society i was trying to extrapolate it out 
Well, uh, I, I know the one guy that I was talking to and interviewed, he was saying that we can actually create a, an account, a trust account. So you could do banking through a trust account, right? Instead of doing it through your corporate slave name, you can do it through a trust. You can open up okay. a trust bank, you can do all those things. So you're not actually, you could still do commerce. And what are the advantages to that? Uh, by them not, you not giving power to that slave name that they gave you. All right. All so right. that, okay. that, that way comes to most of our interviews and says you know we're that's the mark of the beast is our slave name you know stop using your actual name that's what you're giving power to this beast system what are you supposed by to use by, by participating again you could maybe use a trust account right you could maybe that, do that things. doesn't like change people, anything right am i still participating in a system under a trust account, I'm still under my same name. Okay, it's smaller caps, bigger caps, uh, right? I'm still that same guy participating in the system. How, how does that help me? Because now I've changed my identity in some way. I'm still participating in the system, right? I guess. Am what's I? your thoughts, John? I don't know what I'm asking. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how one would go about that, but I have heard of uh, the things that you're talking about, like, you know, creating trust and um, and even people talking about, uh, you know, I, I guess it's a lot easier uh, for younger people that are like still birthing children and, and things like that to have them delivered by midwives and not have them actually locked And in they opt out all together. Yeah. yeah, right. Uh, I think that would probably be an easier route. Um, but if everybody I've heard a couple of people say it, that too, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like it's, I feel like it's impossible if I just try to do it alone. They're gonna tell me to, to eat a dick when I go to the bank, you know, they're not gonna give me my money, yes. you know, yes. like my job's yes. gonna fire me, like I'm not gonna get my retirement. All these things that I've sewed into, I'm not gonna get. But if we all do it together at the same time, that would be a, a different story. It's, it's once again, it goes back to, um, you know, getting people to stop doing something like you're never going to get a lot of these people. And this is just the truth yeah. um, to, to stop participating in the system because they get too much benefit, too much yes. advantage, too much right. gain by participating. You tell them, you say, what's the alternative? My, right. my kid starves. I lose my fucking house. Right. right? What are you what offering are you offering me? Or not, the taxes right. are going to take your home. Right, the land, even the mineral rights underneath your land. You don't own your land, even if you own your land. All that shit don't matter because every day I have right. my internet, I have my bank account. You know, all of me telling them it can be taken away means nothing because today this is how I uh, feed my family and all of that shit. What do you offer them uh, to get them to come out of that shit? What are you offering me? Were you giving me this argument? It seems like it is super fucking hard to overcome well, well, that that's, way, that's that way they, took it, go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say that way took it not to part like i added in the trust account you know like that says just get rid of the name but that way has been camping life for 10 years got out of the system not participating even that's in the financial, financial yeah. part of it and a lot of people are looking to build these off-grid communities getting away yes. from the system Part of some uh, here, of the here, Bible Jesse. taught was to get away from the the city. Jesus said, "Get away! The cities are going to be destroyed. You know, we're going to just there. The, the cities are going to be destroyed. Get away! Get out of the cities!" And if this is say biblical times that say this is repeating itself from what happened, is that the warning saying getting out of the city? Don't participate in this B system. You need to find other ways to, to right, survive to here without. You know, part you know, being a part of this obviously, you know, demonic or beast system that's you know controlled by poisoning, war mentalities, you know, everything that we say we're against by us continuing to do commerce, to do the internet, to do things, we're actually helping participate in that system still functioning. Right. And you're talking oh, yeah. about when Christ said flee to the hills of Judea and stuff like that. I, I know what you mean. And uh I, I agree, but uh, that's that's the problem. It's going to be those of us, um, those of us who who are willing to do that, who value our soul, our spiritual way of life, 
as opposed to material things. But when you live in an atheistic materialist society, 99% of the people, that's how they've, you know, they've sold out and sold themselves and, and sold themselves to the system already. That's how they continuously put the clamps down on us is by getting people to capitulate, by offering them luxury, by offering them money, by offering them, you know, the things that they offer. And I feel like there is no, until we can come up with a way to um, get people in, like we're trying obviously by trying to increase awareness, raise awareness to change the way that people actually think and perceive the world. That's what it's gonna take because it's like, we can never offer them what they're being offered to stay in society. We have to change the way that they see society for them to wanna, you know, to wanna leave. That's and um, yeah, I mean, and that's, that's that to me, that's the only way that we're ever gonna, you know, have any real impact or effect on anything is by showing them how detrimental it is to stay within the system. So I, mean, I, I really uh, applaud what you're trying to do, but a lot of the time that people create these off-grid communities, you know what they end up becoming? They end up becoming fucking cults is what they become. Because, you know, whoever started the community, whoever runs it at the top, you know, like they're next thing you know, they've got everybody offering up their fucking wives and weird shit like that. So it's like, it, it's, you know, it's, it, it never really works out that way because there's no, you know, there's no equal balance of, of law and order and stuff. So unless you can find a community that's willing to create like some type of committee or, you know, something like that to where it's not become a, a dictatorship by the person who started it or uh, where, you know, it's not just the worship of some content creator that decided to go off grid or, or whatever. Like, then I feel like, um, you know, we're, we're going to continue to run into those same problems. That's why they collapse over and over. Every time they get these off grid communities, they end up collapsing for the same, same type of issues. I feel like I've seen a lot of them. And I mean, that's not to say all of them do that, but a lot of them do have the same type of cultish problems that we've seen, you know, over and over. And a lot of people won't even risk going to one because of, of those type of things. I think part of the issues that they have is once they start getting too many people, then people start to think they need a hierarchical structure. People start to now want to be in charge and one of the things that the Amish people do, which, you know, like Hutterites in Canada, they're called Amish, I guess, in the U.S., is that once they get to 100 people, then they split. So they'll split into two colonies, two lands of 50, and they grow and grow and grow. And once they get to 100, they split, right? Now, obviously, there's a, a person that's kind of in charge, but um, some people that I've talked to and some of the reasons why you know, there's issues among people is because once there's too many people in that group, now there's the infight. I want to be in charge and, you know, and all these type of things, I guess that does happen, which, you know, maybe is a reason why some of these off grid places don't run harmoniously. And then there may be a lot of ones that do run harmoniously. We just don't hear about them because they're off grid. Right. So we right. don't know about them splitting. They're just out there in their communities and their villages or you know their uh you know people different tribes that are out there that just function just right because you know right. they know how to live in balance and, and harmoniously not only with the land but you know with each other as well and i and i believe it's possible jesse you know and, and i you're probably right the reason we don't hear about the successful ones is because they're off grid and there's nobody um, you know, disgruntled leaving that coming on social media talking about how much of a shit show it was. You know, they're 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 living peacefully, minding their own business. You know, and uh, I do believe, like naturally, we're supposed. You know, if you look at like the Hopi prophecy, I mean, any you know, especially when it comes to, like native prophecies, it talks about returning to the original ways, the original teachings, and like to me, that means being in balance with the land. And we, you know. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I, I'm an anarchist by nature. I, I believe that we don't need, you know, governments and, and all of these, you know, systems like we're able to govern ourselves. You know, we, we have that God given ability, you know, and, um, and, and I any, think you're probably right. Go ahead. If anyone do, do Bible that? here, what is, do, uh, know what the abomination of desolation is? You were saying yeah, they said the fleets in the, the mountains. 
the destruction of the third temple. Yes, the abomination that causes desolation. You see the abomination that causes desolation standing in the holy place. The destruction of the third temple sitting in the holy place. That's what and you see the abomination that causes desolation standing in the holy place. To me, that was the jab. Yeah, what do you think place. that <laughs> could that be the third eye? Yeah, that's what I think it is. The first temple, second temple, third temple. Destruction third of temple. the temple. All um, right. The abomination uh, that causes desolation was a jab because you know it was graphene and I don't want to get your channel in trouble, but and yeah, magnetic yeah. properties and the the magnetic pole of our body is our, our third eye. So yeah, I looked that up because I had a reoccurring dream where I had to keep running to the mountains, uh, and you know, hearing you say that, that he said and uh, flee to the mountains. I just looked it up, and uh, he said, when you see the abomination of desolation coming, that's when you leave, and that's also the part we say many will come in my name. Well, and I just want to try to throw this out there, too. A lot of times when we look at, like, biblical scripture, and this is my opinion, um, like, things like words, like, you know, the when you see the abomination calls desolation, to me, that was Trump and the jab and all of that. And, you know, the, you know, the attack, you know, the, the pineal, the third temple, because that's what that actually destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, and when it's saying flee to the mountains, uh, the, those mountains are, like, spiritual mountains. You think of, like, you know, the you know the the rock building on the rock the, the 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 stone the builders rejected christ it's like spiritual mountains it's like talking about a, a higher spiritual place so it's like fleeing to a, a higher that's very spiritual. logical when you see shit get really rough that's when you become more spiritual right yeah. and i think that's I, what he was talking about and that was, that's probably what happened when we've seen all that shit taking place a lot of people started converting to the truth and then a lot of people came out also and said this is the end times, the false prophets. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of that going on. There's also could be a literal uh, meaning to it, too. And I know for me, Probably I think both. it is because I spent a lot of time in the mountains in Colorado. Uh, and I think and, and everybody out here is doing that prepper by land shit and all of that. You know, so, uh, you know, if something did happen and not only that, you flee to the mountains, you become independent. Right. When you get outside of the governmental system, that's what started me down a path. I totally forgot. And uh, and you uh, become independent. You, uh, you, I don't know what the shit we were talking about earlier, leaving the beast system and all of that bullshit. It looks like in order to get rid of that shit, you'd have to leave. You can't even use your name. Fuck with them at all. Maybe in a sense, that's fleeing to the mountains as well. Is there a difference between sovereignty and anarchy? Um, well, sovereignty to, to me is like uh, that's you um, essentially claiming, and you better be careful about the sovereignty shit. A lot of people that claim to be sovereign citizens end up missing and end up dead. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not playing about that. That's one of the most dangerous things you can ever say is like I'm a sovereign citizen. Um, and, isn't that and I don't an know why that one? But isn't that uh, an oxymoron? Because if you're a citizen, you can't be a sovereign, and if you're a it, sovereign, right. you're not really a citizen. So calling well, yourself you're a, a, you're a, you're a citizen, citizen of your own actually kingdom. an oxymoron because you're claiming to be outside of the system that you're a citizen in. So it just seems yeah, well, like that's not that doesn't even actually make a lot of sense. Technically, Jesse, I think you'd probably be right. The wording of it is probably not great wording. Uh, I think you're probably right about that. A sovereign citizen really makes no sense, but unless it's a citizen of your own kingdom. Like in the 32nd degree of Freemasonry, um, one of the, you know, like the final, you know, uh, test is like realizing that you are the king of your own, your own nation, right? You're the king of your own world. You, you're under the rulership of no other man. So it's like uh, when we claim to be a sovereign and that's what we're doing, these rulers, these aristocrats, you know, these monarchs over time, that's what they were. They were well, sovereign. suddenly they were sovereign the, citizen doesn't sound under, so bad. Right, they were not under the dominion of, of the governments. They were the governments. The governments were acting under their dominion, right? They were actually the sovereigns. They were the kings, the queens, the monarchs, right? And when you look at police to this day, 
they're a fraternal order and they're technically like the closest thing to a sovereign system, but they're actually acting like that in order or in, in, um, in lieu of uh, the sovereigns today. So it's like they don't follow uh, the same rules that we follow or anything. A sovereign would rule over motherfuckers. A citizen would have a ruler. A sovereign citizen could be saying, uh, I am uh, a ruler uh, of myself. Right. I will rule no one else. I rule myself. Now sovereign citizen certainly makes sense. Right. Right. That's what I believe too. Like, and, and, you know, with the whole anarchist thing, you know, that's technically what it, what it is. We're all self rulership. No rules. That's, that's Satanism shit. too. A lot of people don't no know that. Is Satanism? They, yes, it is. Satanism is being your own God. So, like a lot of people think it's all about like worshiping the devil and all that stuff. Oh, they right. Don't God understand. would be a ruler. Uh, in Satanism, uh, uh, no rulers. God would be a ruler. It can't be a thing if uh, technically if you're no rulers. Okay. Right. And it's like if you think about our inheritance, even Jesus Christ said, I am in the Father, the Father's in me, you know, and we're in the Father. He's saying, like, we're all one, we're all in each other. And it's like our inheritance. He said, Didn't I say that ye are gods? Like referring to Psalms, God. Ye are all gods. gods. Yeah. Right. So like, technically, you know, I'm just saying, uh, you know, like what we demonize in, in the world is usually the things that, the reason it's being demonized is because they want to keep you away from it. Because if it, if you were to actually uh, gravitate towards those things, you would be free. Uh, then we'd have to discuss what is free. Uh, if, if free is being your own ruler, uh, then yeah, that shit will get you there. If that's what freedom is. Jack, what's uh, being free to you? Self rulership self-governing um and i know how how religions have twisted the idea of um independence but the way i see that happening is with a humility and a faith to the divine to god the you know the christed way that, that we were shown when we start treating each other with love with care with respect we're not going to have these wars. We're not going to have the oppression and the censorship. We're going to have a totally different world. And I truly believe, I truly believe that this is what is happening. We are a part of this shift, part of this transition. Some days it's hard to believe it. It's hard to find that within yourself. But yeah, there you go. Little G gods. We're here to co-create the best life we can are you all optimistic that the next few years will become much better for us all or do you feel that there's going to be a lot more doom before there is you know rainy day or sunny days trump go ahead I, I am prayerful and hopeful that that it won't get much worse right i see a lot of others gambling not only on my life but on the bigger light world a lot of people are betting that things are going to get worse and um i think we have you don't believe it's going to get worse is that your answer i think it's already worse than can be imagined for some there's some right now, alive today, in this yeah. moment, that yeah. I am so grateful I'm not yeah. living their lives. There's some right now who can't imagine that that they are just absolutely living in Okay, hell. well, let's assume we're not talking about individual motherfuckers. As a whole, uh, will it get worse? If good men and women don't stand up, yes, All it right. will get worse. All right, here, let me rephrase the question. Uh, what do you think uh, will happen? Do, does Jack think it will get better or worse? It's got to get better. Jack's going to the UN to fix it for us. 
It's, it's pretty sure it's going to get better. Damn it, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to yeah, do exactly. every, every day I live. That's why I live. I live for no other reasons than to try. All right, and Jack, you are, you are insignificant. You can't make it better. It won't get better because Jack is the only one trying. No. But he's not the only one trying. I know uh, that. I'm role it. playing a little bit with his knucklehead. I'm that's just it. I'm just a small piece in this great big movement. There is a lot of parts, and there is a lot of people gaining power, gaining strength, groups coming together. There's a lot of positive ideas that are happening. Oh, and yeah. I just want to be a I want to be a bigger part of that bigger picture. I, I know uh you're well, hang on. So we just, Go ahead. We just have Rena Rena here saying, I don't want to I don't want us to fail before going home. And then on the opposite side, um Lisa says worse, not enough people are suffering yet for it to get better, right? So there's Ooh. a lot of different mentalities on how this Ooh. thing is happening right now. I like the I, I Lisa, with, uh, Lisa. Yeah. And I agree with Lisa. I think that it's, and I'm Too not saying Jack is, I don't think Jack is wrong. I think we have, we're about to the, to the, the pinnacle of suffering. And a lot of people have it way worse than us here in the United States, for sure, or Canada, um, you know, North America, uh, for sure. But uh, I, I think there's still a little ways to go. You know, we're not there yet. There's not enough people, people too comfortable care. to change right now. Still, they are too fucking yeah. comfortable. It would seem. Hopefully, Jack is right. It would seem. Are the people in the ghetto comfortable? Apparently, because we suck it up and uh, we're not only that <laughs> fucking, we find a way to glorify it and make it like it's the greatest shit in the world. Apparently. Hey, um, so you think that there needs more suffering there in order for them to change, Joe? I do. Yeah, I do. It sucks. I think it's, if you're asking for me, I think it's going to get a lot worse. Hella, hella, hella lot worse. In the ghetto, is getting a lot worse. Motherfuckers standing on the corner uh, in hundreds. Youth, if you ain't seen that shit in Chicago, it's fucking crazy. Shit I ain't seen in my lifetime. Not They just roaming in mobs. They can't stop them. It's fucking insane. It's probably going to get worse. Right. And the amount of homeless people in our cities too. I live in Cincinnati. Uh, the amount of homeless people, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know? So, uh, there's, there's gotta be a, you know, I feel like we're probably just now going into a lot of these birthing things. And if you look at, and, and I know this doesn't mean anything to a lot of you guys, but you know, the, the, the seven year period between those solar eclipses, we're getting ready to experience that second eclipse over, uh, the United States that creates that big X. Uh, here in April, so I feel like we're really gonna see things shift. This is a all right, all right. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the solar eclipse is just saying. First of all, I wonder how a solar eclipse causes a fucking X when it's just going across the sky. I don't know where the X would come into play. It's and the line of shadow that it lays across the land. It's it goes across in one direction. How can there be a shadow of two? Because it's no, no, no. The moon's going one. The moon's period. going one way, and the sun is going the other way. So they're intersecting in an X, and it's going to be over Texas, Arizona type of area where that X actually intersects. I think it's Texas where Rion said he was doing a an event where it's ninety eight degrees straight up is where the the the, the sun and the moon intersect in that x how is it different from any other eclipse i don't know i think it's two two eclipses the paths cross if i if i remember correctly all right if you're recording where the last eclipse was and then 70 years later where that path crossed that make crosses that makes sense where the shadow the path of the shadow is it's being crossed between these two eclipses as I understood, and then that guy you're talking about, he's he's gonna be there. That's pretty cool. Where it happens, um, life is a mystery. Damn it! You always go back to that shit. There you uh, go. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. That was my fault. That was my bad. But uh, that was me and my nervous energy. Uh, uh, I just assumed that you were going to be like, guys, we could do it. 
peace, we could come together and it feel like that just totally left the fucking conversation and you start doing that until you gather a thought and it just, I don't know, it apparently irks me and I need to get over it more and I need to be telling you what to do. I love you, Joe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate all the people that are here with us right now, lighting up the chat, giving us energy. We got around 120 people watching live with us here on all of our different platforms so sending love to y'all and appreciate you coming <laughs> hanging out and i forget yeah, that I, every time jesse just saying it's a secret and private as i be thinking it is i feel fuck it i don't know what network you might be all fucking with you bro right <laughs> and jack he's restreaming to his platform and john <laughs> got you know john's got his the uh, um you know different platforms which he's you know, tagged his people to come in here and stuff like that as well. So All right, very it. good. And I think the more that we do come together, have discussions like this, real talk, you know, between yeah. people where there's no egos involved, there's no the name calling and all the shit that divides us, that we can actually get to some, you know, real, real roads that can help us in our journeys. And that network, and I think you're selling me on the network and shit. You know, I only do fucking YouTube, but it seems logical if the shit we was talking about, everybody's awakening, the more people we know, the internet is the way. It's only logical that you'll be on eight different fucking platforms trying to reach a bunch of people, get that word out. It's logical. Um, it's the third eclipse, which marks the X, is what Edward is It's the is second. Saying. The first one was August 21st, 2017. It's the second. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, man, so I you know what he's talking about, right? <laughs> what I wanted to ask yeah. y'all is about, you know, possible cataclysms, possible something that could be major disasters that may take place. So... Um, apparently a lot of people building underground bunkers, different things. You got the military building these underground cities and some people have even come on the missing link to talk about, you know, why aren't they telling the truth of what they know is coming now? Is this, you know, something that is a natural phenomenon that is coming or is this a man made, you know, in order to replicate something you know, like a meteor is supposed to hit the ocean and half of the fish is supposed to die. You know, is that going to be a nuclear bomb that they say is a meteor? And it's I like where you're going with it. If they're making all these preparations, clearly they know about it. doesn't change the fact that if it comes in the form of a meteor, uh, you shouldn't immediately think that they didn't know about it. It was a freak accident. No, maybe they knew about it. Maybe they had planned it. Maybe they're making it look like that because these persons already took precautions. Maybe it's not so. It's a natural happy accident. Unhappy accident. And I know, John, you've studied, you know, these things quite extensively. So I was just wondering what your thoughts on that are. Okay, well, um, you know, first off, I think uh, that if we look at like the electromagnetic field, and if we do technically live in a permanent or a closed system, then it would be impossible for something to actually hit us if we're in a closed system. If also, it were flat we Earth, there would be no meteorites. I agree with you. Right. And if we live uh, have an electromagnetic field, which we know that we do, that protects the Earth, it's uh, essentially magnetism that's repelling objects and radiation away from the Earth to keep us safe, right? So if a giant metal rock is going past the earth and when you have two magnets, right? If, if they're uh, polar opposites, they will repel each other. And that's essentially what the magnetic field is doing is pushing those objects away from us. Let me give you some pushback. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. I think I've missed agree on, uh, missed on both points. Uh, you were saying if we're in a, a closed system, uh, things won't hit us. You mean... It sounds like now you're saying that between the firmament and magnetism, things won't hit us. I'm saying either either way, um, the likelihood of something hitting us is probably pretty low. If you think because of what um, reason? Because either A, we live in a firmament, which is a closed system. So that means are you talking dome or are you talking dust? Are you talking dome or are you talking about some penetrable like dust I'm and atmosphere? Either way. Well, if we have a dome, a firmament, right. which firmament means an arc, 
right? So if we have an arc, which actually keeps us from being penetrated by anything from outside, we live in a closed system, right. it's impossible. And okay. if it's not a permanent, like an actual closed system, and it's electromagnetic field, then right. by law of magnetics, right? When right. you have two yes, opposites right, yeah. magnetically, the magnetics, the magnets won't come together. They push apart, and that's what an electromagnetic field would be doing to a giant metal space. All right, here's the problem, here's the problem. Hitting. Here's the problem with that. The uh, first one is we are uh, in a dome. There would be no media rights. And I think we found enough uh, we should be able to say that there are media rights uh, the, the, with the first dome theory. And the uh, the, the second one with the uh, magnetic uh, moving shit, uh, the magnetics out there are way too weak. We know that because we spend spaceships and satellites past the shit all the time and it don't Ooh. toss them around. And you use gps recently whoever said do we you use gps no, i said do we i said yes. do we because you know we just because we have a satellite doesn't mean we're in space that's just in uh, the upper atmosphere that's not in actual space so uh, okay well um, we could we could uh, potato we're, we're potato taking but stereo images of the sun we're just using cameras and lenses and mirrors and things like that to amplify image so we're not actually out in space that way either i don't believe we go to space I don't believe okay, we well, well, I think we got to do this conversation. Uh, you define space as a place where there is no gravity or define, low gravity. I, I don't define space as a place of no gravity. I define it as outside of the firmament. I believe. Well, let me ask you this, because firmament may be system. subjective. Uh, if I start going high, high, and then gravity ends, am I out of space? If I can float, you consider that space? You wouldn't be able to go there. You'd freeze and die before you ever got there. But that, well, sure. uh, well, not a human being. Uh, uh, a satellite, isn't it floating in space or no? It's floating in the upper atmosphere. where High the, enough the, where the there's no thinner. gravity, which we just call space. Is it hovering there's, high no, like a the plane? Air, there's no such thing as gravity. It's never been proven. It's just Very a theory, good. first off. And second off, it's air, and it's the amount of pressure because it's thinner things can flow easier so there's no air pressure pushing it down right? so you think and if you're an electromagnetic are you, are you being, saying everything satellites just properties. naturally float uh, is that what you're saying no i'm saying they're inflated with stuff right they're shot up into the sky uh, a lot of times when they come down they're attached to fucking weather balloons i'm saying that's actually what not what they uh they're attached weather to balloons. weather balloons. Weather balloons. <laughs> I'm saying uh, uh, things are not always as they appear, not as we're told on the news or by NASA. Well, I know that without you telling me, yeah? No, you're saying that they stay up there, and I'm asking how. Are you telling me all these satellites that my son phone uses are up there by weather balloons? Or is that what you're telling me? And if there is some other propulsion or method that's keeping them up, let me know now. Well, I'm sure I'm there's lots that, of different things that are keeping them up. So with the technology, I'd love to hear electric, some of them. You know, the the drone technology, right? They've it can only last so for minutes, with, but they could be also having um solar that has sun. Well, it can not be drone technology, actually, right? Because we know that's solar, electrical. We can't. No, 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 no. We can't. No, no, no. We can't throw a lot bunch of stuff out there and act like we made a good point when we have it. Drone technology is very limited. It will not stay up long enough to work and orbit the Earth a bunch of times. Drone technology is not really a thing that we can use, right? What else is there? If you would stop talking, uh, there's anti gravity. There's electromagnetic. Wait, wait, wait! Anti gravity. Let's not run through them. Yeah. Anti gravity. Where else has that been uh, demonstrated? Anti gravity. It's electromagnetism. It's the. It's by using a magnetic field. That's demonstrated in every fucking uh, piece of technology you have. I don't know what uh, you're talking about. No, no. Ant anti gravity. I think you mean levitation. Yeah, and because we're talking about a floating satellite. Yeah, anti gravity. We got a lot of shit floating, or do we just use it for satellites? I don't even see how this is important, bro. Oh no, 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 no! I ain't listen. If you're, if you get, I don't mean <laughs> if you're getting sensitive. I like for a motherfucker to speak his mind and, and say what the fuck he feel. I don't mean to touch nerves and all of that shit. But if you give me an argument, expect a counter argument. Be okay. I with wasn't. It. I was asked a question, and you interrupted me rudely, and then started trying to debate with me about something. All right. Well, have the easy life unchallenged. Enjoy yourself. He's big on the flat earth debate, so he gets into this. Uh, oh, no. Fuck that. Then I should get on him. Fuck a soft ass flat earther. Fuck that. 
If that's what it is, don't challenge my flirts. I don't think he's a flat But I don't think he's a flat earther. He said if it is this way and then it is this way, he was trying to present both theories of it. He didn't take one step nor the other. What he was saying is if it's this way, this would happen. If it's this way, this would happen. Yes, and then I responded by saying both of these theories are illogical. The one, the barrier, that was illogical called so-and-so. And and two, I gave a reason why I think that's illogical. I think that's fair. I don't think there's nothing wrong. I'm not interrupting you doing no horrible shit. It's fair for me to give my opinion after you know what you, you just are said. You interrupting me. You've been doing it the whole time to everybody. I think you're right. sensitive because uh, that you hate fucking uh, having to defend your position. You're not used to it. That's what I said. I'm not on here to defend my position. I was asked a question. I'm not here to argue with you. I know who the fuck you are. <laughs> you don't have to talk. It is just one this guy. This is counterintuitive. We're on here to talk about things. You're on here to argue. Like you I was the cat talking about the fucking uh, firmament and the dome and all that shit. Yeah. I, so I can agree with you and say this shit's okay, but don't say I disagree. You calling an argument, man. Well, quit cutting me the fuck off. Like, I'm being so fucking the question. Go ahead, Jack, Phil. Jack, what do you think, Jack? <clears throat> I lost track of the conversation, right. to be honest. Cataclysms, cataclysms. You know, I guess we're talking about, you know, is this stuff that's, you know, potentially happening, building underground bases. We see these even like people that aren't part of militaries but got a lot of money building underground bunkers. Is there something coming? And if it is, is this just natural or is this maybe manufactured, you know, to make it look, make Bible prophecy look even more real that if they actually make stuff actually happen because of it? I think it's a little of both. I lean towards the, well, there's theories of the cycles of catastrophic cycles, right? Um, which includes the theories of the magnetic pole shifting on Earth, but that gets into the debate of what is what is this realm. I do believe that there are patterns, patterns shown through geology, patterns th- shown through people, right, through history. Okay. And for lack of a better word, the elite, there's been... There's been people who've had power and wealth. That wealth and power has given them access to knowledge that most of the common people have not known. And you're saying they'd use that to uh, provide cyclic catastrophe? Is this I, think, I think there are cyclic cyclic. You said in nature, but, and then you went to people. I was asking, yeah, I was wondering. I'm sorry. I think what people are doing is they're using the information, predicting the signs, but putting it out with the purpose of fear, because the more fear, yeah, that still be cyclic catastrophe in a way, yeah, yeah. I think he's talking about more natural disasters. He's talking about you know uh, big shit, uh, wars, uh, 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 meteorites and shit, asteroids. And you know, he said it started off with people are building bunkers. That's what he started off with, meaning they're preparing for some catastrophic event where you need a bunker uh not just some lightweight shit it also could be like a war right like if they're going to start nuking the shit out of everything where everything could potentially die top side they're gonna have to go in for whatever two five ten twenty years until the dust settles so this yes. could potentially be another reason why you know they they're wanting to go underground because they're wanting to reset the top again it's logical all this digging they've been doing i was just watching some shit on dia denver international airport yesterday uh and you know it, it went i don't know 4.8 billion dollars over budget in the first couple of years or some nonsense equivalent to eight point whatever today uh and most of it was digging shit and as part of it a big chunk went to they say they made this really nice building five-story building massive and then they said uh you know what it's structurally unsound uh so we're just gonna bury it and not use it and that just makes me you know and, and 
first of all, I've never heard of that done anywhere else. We're, we're, uh, we're just going to ignore it and bury it. Not all that money we put in it, we're not going to use the land. Fuck out of here. And there was uh, something happened where they couldn't use the tunnels that the public regularly use. They had to divert them to get out of there. And the passengers say they were gold leaf and the most incredible artwork in the world. Uh, so one guy goes back up and he go asks, you know, can we see tours and shit like that? Uh, and they said that uh, those things are not open to the public. And they say, well, why would they build all this beautiful artwork and sit down here and, and, and literally gold leaves on the wall if uh, it's not for the public? Who are they building all these beautiful underground tunnels and five story building underground, not to mention all these billions of dollars that you went digging fucking tunnels, not to mention this is Colorado, uh, Cheyenne Mountain, all underground tunnels and military bases. It's all logical to me. John, would you like to respond or finish off with what you were saying before or just respond to what was going on here? Uh, I don't know. Um, I was just saying earlier that, you know, the, with the whole meteorite thing, it could be either one. Uh, but I honestly, I doubt that, you know, we're, we're getting hit by meteorite. It's probably more likely that they would uh, create some type of crisis scenario where, you know, they, they detonate some small tactical nuclear bomb or some shit like that and then call it, you know, say like. And a if meteorite, it is a meteorite, you know, they're manufacturing it. it. It don't have to be a natural meteorite, right? It's some shit that come in that they could have threw up there and dropped on us and say it's a meteorite. What the fuck well, do we know? About a closed system, plasma, you know, once it goes to the top of a closed system, it's in a cyclical energetic loop. So uh, say it first starts off as gas, you know, the gas can be made out of uh, nickel, emerald, like all these different, you know, components or elements. And then it goes up to the top of uh, a firmament, electromagnetic field, it gets heated and comes back down. So what I think we see as meteors is actually that. It's just like a cycle of gas to plasma to metal and back down. So do you gas, think uh, plasma, it's natural or is it something uh, men are yeah. doing on purpose or both? I think it's both. I think, uh, you know, we, we put things into the air all the time. We use radiation, uh, chemtrails. We put things into the so water. We are to disturb our electromagnetic senses. frequency. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about the manifestation of these potential things that can happen. So um, we'll start off with you, Jack. Um, you know, with the Bible, you know, it says that these things are supposed to happen. That you know, this meteor is supposed to come supposed drying to up out of Euphrates. Euphrates, uh, it's supposed to hit the river. Fifty percent of all of everything is supposed to die inside the river or in the ocean. Um, 50, yeah. well, fifty percent of the people eat from the ocean. Now, if enough people believe this is supposed to happen, Jack, and a lot of people there are, you know, aligned with the Bible. This is God's word. God said He wrote it. Ooh. It's supposed to happen. Now, with all the people that believe that this is supposed to happen, are they helping manifest this to actually happen? And potentially, whether it's man-made or not, you know, they've actually manifested it into existence. And not are they helping, uh, are we actually helping? Is it a chance that without us, it doesn't occur? Yeah. Well, the power of our mind has been <laughs> the masses. We don't understand the power of our mind. And a lot of this, I believe there has been a lot of programming and indoctrination through the interpretation <coughs> of what has been written. I've heard it. I've heard people point out based on modern day events, how you could say the signs are here, right? And if you take some of the words from the Bible, a little, allegorically or metaphorically the signs are here i believe that we are the it's my and i hold the 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 opinion the interpretation we we are the return of jesus right the return of christ it comes through us and when we join together as the body of christ as we were created to be as the body of christ through one being we will reign with the truth right we'll let the truth reign supreme does that mean jack if people connect back with that christed energy that christed spirit come back to the love 
that we could stop the meteor from coming, that we wouldn't manifest this darkness into existence. Like, and, and actually the word of God, which says that all this is supposed to happen, the Christed energy could actually come back and stop any of this chaos and destruction from happening. I believe with God, all things are possible, the good and the bad, right? Dope, dope, dope. <laughs> Sterling, welcome to the Missing Link open panel. What's your thoughts on that? Profound. Thanks for having me. Uh, my yeah. name's Sterling, and uh, I'm going to try not to get kicked out too soon. Like, I, I mean, I will eventually get kicked out of here. No, I'm just kidding. Come um, on, man. Are you going to start like that? <laughs> like I have to be I'll, on the button watch? <laughs> well, I'll, what I'll say is that I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep all my clothes on. I can promise you that. So oh, don't yeah, worry. I appreciate that. But I tell you what, like, um, I'm going to like and subscribe. Um, I, I don't know much about this channel. I'm not sure whose it is. And I really just follow uh, Jack Talcott around. I'm his biggest Ooh. fan. And Joe Cool seems pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how long. I think I might have just met him. And um, I saw you things. somewhere, yo. I don't know where I was at, but I saw you. I only can remember because of the Dark Sterling, is your name from the Dark in a Row? I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, whose panel is this? Uh, yeah. Okay, Jesse. Yeah. Jesse, I, feel, and... I, I do that a lot too, bro. Uh, <laughs> no, it's Jesse, the channel owner is on the other I'm side. Jesse, the bottom. Yeah, that's right. Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. And, then and that's all, John Keen. Um, that's John. He's from the Best Damn Podcast Show. So he's a podcaster that's been uh, on the missing. He was actually in interview number two when we started the missing Holy link. Hell. He was right, right from the very, very beginning. Um, he's been on a few times now. Um, Holy fantastic hell. energy, very intelligent, and uh, you know, don't like being challenged though. I noticed that. Don't Joe. like that shit. Well, I, don't, I don't know about it much as being challenged is about being interrupted because he's trying to finish a thought and you're just trying to get clarification on that thought, but he's trying to get that thought out. So sometimes people just rather you wait till you, they get the thought out before you start asking the questions about it. So, you know, not everybody responds the same to, you know, needing to get their thoughts clarified because some people lose train of thoughts that way and, you know, it bothers some people and it doesn't mean that they don't like being challenged it's just they don't they have don't get a chance to get the thought out before you know any questions come in okay. i totally disagree with you but okay <laughs> I, I love to test theory we can discuss the flat earth shit and i won't cut you off and we'll go back and forth just test the logic and shit you seem solid on everything else you're talking about you talking to me I was talking to Jonathan. We ain't got to do it now. I was talking to Jonathan. At some point, I like to discuss some flat Earth shit with him because I got a lot of theories on it too. Don't let me interrupt. We're, 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 no, 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 no. That shit can hold for another time. I think I pissed him off anyway. John, what what do you think about you know the potential of this cataclysm being you know manufactured? And are we creating it? Can we manifesting if we're actually yeah. manifesting it into existence? And, you know, you got enough people in the world that thinks it's supposed to happen. Is that the will of this God being that we're as creators? Are we creating it? Yeah. Well, if you if you think about what people would call like uh, self fulfilling prophecies and shit like that, okay. you know, if you if you believe something bad's going to happen, you're like, oh, this person's going to cheat on me. This person's going to cheat on me, and then they cheat on you. Or this, you know, everybody's a liar. Or everybody's this way, and then. Your experience matches, you know, your your yeah. mentality. Well, then imagine that on a collective level, where everybody's powerfully, you know, collectively manifesting something. And if you think about scripture, the base word in that is script, right? And yeah. if we do live in a program reality, this would be the script to the program. That's why there's nothing new under the sun. It's a cyclical story, you know. It's that Ouroboros, that serpent devouring its own tail. It's, it's something that happens on repeat. We, we go to the end of these cycles, we get to the pinnacle of consciousness, and then we get wiped the fuck out every time, you know? And I, and I wonder why, right? It's because every time we're fed these prophecies of how we have to all be thinned out and we have to all fucking die and, you know, in, in order to, you know, because God's mad at us. So I I'm laughing like, at the comments, not at you, bro. Uh, I, so I, 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 I love that, you know, um, you know, people, people have faith in something and something, 
you know, bigger than themselves and they feel like there's somebody trying to balance everything in the universe. But at the same time, I feel like we're, we're all definitely being, you know, uh, led to the slaughter and by having these ideas implanted in us through these prophecies, right? We're, we're following a script and it's probably a narrative that doesn't serve any of us. You know, of course it does. And, and that we wouldn't like. Yeah. Now, what about these resets now? So for some reason, what feels in alignment with me is that once we start remembering who we are, the power we have, you know, that we don't want to be slaves, that we want freedom, sovereignty, and all this stuff, that once we start remembering who and what we are, then they need to reset it back to the slave <laughs> hunting again. And is that, is that what we're going through right now? Don't, because Jesse. it seems like in the end of the 1800s, um, all of a sudden we went from this free energy, we went through back into the oil, back into, you know, they were getting energy out of the ground. They were with the Chicago fires, all these buildings, they built 40 years later after they just built it, they knocked them down to, so people didn't see what kind of old technologies were just to believe this rudimentary system that we were kind of maybe having to start all over. All right, you might have went off on the rails a little bit with me with the uh, knocking down the old cities uh, thing, but I get that when we get optimistic, they reset the shit by uh, making some catastrophic happen. I don't know if they were able to knock down old cities, especially like Chicago, uh, because of some hidden technology that they didn't want us to see. Because just because it's all the pictures and documented, it's so historical. Blah blah blah. Real quick. I just want to, it just occurred to me that I need to really introduce myself just a little better. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I, I, I work for NASA. And uh, it has been say, it said that I lack discernment. I'm not going to lie to you about that. And um, we had one more. No, that's it. That's all. That's all. I remember right. now. Did you, did you I remember now. now. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Uh, what's, your well, thoughts, what's your thoughts about the reset there, Jack? Um, Jack, you were reading the chat. I'll recap it, but you just was saying something pretty interesting. Uh, these things, uh, all of us are coming together right now and having this awakening. I think people even call it a great awakening where we're coming back to God. These are what causes that cyclical reset. They must do something that set us back and, and you know, knock us down. That's right. Thank you. The, there's a lot of mysteries to history. <laughs> I mean, uh, the the theories on the mud floods on tartar tartaria i mean just the 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 amount of history that is available and how little we truly do know individually and collectively i think there is something to this whether how much of it is is an absolute reset and re restarting of history I don't know. It could have been as early as 1800s, but I don't. I I do believe in the longer cycles of history that that are around. Was that a you do believe that they're doing these uh, resets or uh, no? Not as much. I mean, I believe in the great the floods and and stuff like that through through time. Nature. The idea that history did start as early as the 1800s i don't buy into that concept could you explain one of these resets to him jesse but, but, but what about say you know the people start fucking up the sodom and gomorrah doing all these immoral acts and behaviors deeming the she he him and kind of weird shit um you know that if this starts happening will god say you all fucking up you know we need to reset this maybe a natural reset I think it has happened. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'm pretty well convinced that we we exist within the mind of God. It's within the mind that all things are. And so... I think you intentionally try to be obscure, and apparently I'm just being a dick tonight. But I think <laughs> you intentionally... Uh, um, you know, when they ask a question, you're intentionally giving the vaguest so-and-so uh, uh, rather than giving the best uh, effort to answer it. 
I'm saying is that, and I'm trying not to let it trigger me because normally, God damn it, answer the question. That ain't what he yeah. asked. That's normally how I do things. That's growth. That's growth. Joe. <laughs> it is. Yeah, John, you and Joe Cool are just meeting. This isn't actually a calmer Joe Cool. <laughs> right? right. This, this is a well behaved Joe Cool. Um, he just hit the bong again. Well, we'll see what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I'll put it to two so. <laughs> see where John, what do you think about the resets and how many do you know about that, you know, you actually believe maybe happened before, you know, this this one that we potentially could be in right now? Um, I, I, I believe that they've happened uh, and they coincide with the great conjunctions, the Saturn-Jupiter conjunctions. Uh, you see the, the last Saturn-Jupiter conjunction we have is December 21st, 2020. That's around, you know, the time of the COVID shit. That's when, mm. you know, this reset kicked off. When's Before the next that, one? Uh, I don't know when the next one will be, but I know. It's worth that looking that into, we, Right. But before that, we had one uh, 800 years ago was, like, the, the closest one to, to what we had. And if you, like, go, there's a, it's called, I'm trying to think of the name of the book here. Um, shit, I can't think of the name of the book, but uh, it, it's a book basically shows like the, all the, the, the German and French pictures where like they show like these same things like over time in history where we've had like these great resets where the financial currencies reset where you know 1900, um, there was like a smaller version of it where they had like the Spanish influenza, everybody was wearing the mask, and then World War One, and just like. You know, so we see like it's a cyclical thing. Everything runs on cycles. So we have small. April fourth is the next one, bro. April fourth this that's year. That's the eclipse. Yeah, that's the eclipse, right? The yeah, next alignment of the four planets, planetary injunction, conjunction. I was with, yeah, conjunction. Yeah, well, uh, well, I'm talking about the great conjunction, the Saturn Jupiter conjunction in particular. Ah, okay, that's, that'd like, be different. That's one of the main ones. That right. what, and like when the people that believe in Nibiru. And shit like that. Um, if you go back to ancient Babylonia and all of that, Nibiru is actually Jupiter. So when you see like Jupiter and Saturn together, it looks like you know a planet with wings. You know, so that's where a lot of that shit came from. So uh, you know, and, and I know there's probably people that believe in Planet X and shit. And I'm not saying it's not real, but I'm just saying it's more likely it has to do with these these great conjunctions and a lot of the things that we experience all have to do with astrological events. All right. So February, the end of an age. February 28th, 2025 is the next massive injunction. Like you're talking about with all of them line up. Okay. Well, um, the, uh, those would be like, uh, 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 alignments uh, as opposed to like the great conjunction. So like great conjunction is just two of them. It's just Saturn and Jupiter. And then what you're talking about planetary alignments, like last year we had all the planets go into retrograde. So, you know, which is a very rarity. And we had a really fucked up year last year, 2023. This year uh, adds up to eight in numerology. It's all about finances, you know, and the eight has the infinity symbol. So if you were on the bottom last year, you'll flip up to the top. This year is a dragon year. Like there's, there's many things that go into this. And this is how the elites do their planning around these events because it's based on these natural cycles. And these cycles are explained through numerology, through uh, astrology. And, and uh, you believe and that like they're that. tailoring to the uh, numerological uh, numer events, numer whatever fucking cosmological events. Uh, they are ta tailoring the catastrophe, like in this uh, great conjunction with those two Jupiter uh, Saturn planets uh, that determined what type of fucked up shit happened to here, I think is what you yeah, said. Yeah, technically it does. Like say, um, you know, uh, when the Piscean age happened, you know, you've seen a lot of shit like Spanish inquisitions and shit. It was all about like religious oppression because that's what the energy dictated. They were feeding off of the, what most energy was most prominent in the sky, just like wow. you know, like, so I'm a Virgo, sun, Pisces, moon, Libra, rising, whatever. So the planets that are in the sky when I'm born are the energies that are most prominent. So that makes up the algorithm of who I am. Same thing with the name. How do, they, do what, like, what, how do the planets put off energy because of their size, because of their brilliance? Uh, light and sound. Light you know, and sound? 
Yes, they're heavenly spheres. They have energetic Lights, archetypes. Sound. Yeah. All right, frequencies. Yeah, that's why they, yeah, absolutely frequencies. Yeah. And that's why they believe that, you know, they called them the gods and shit in earlier religions, Greek, Rome, all of that. Yeah. That names, you know. I would Pluto, chalk that up to caveman shit, though. Personally. That's, you know, but astrology is the oldest science on earth. That's not caveman shit. You just don't have, you know, you just haven't understood it because it's been dismissed as like a pseudoscience. So but what, actually, I've bullshit. looked into it uh, to find how it could affect it. So I wouldn't say I haven't looked into it. I haven't grasped onto it because I don't see the science in it yet. Right. You know, uh, when asked how these planets affect you, uh, that people making that leap to how they affect you, most people don't can't make that connection, which would help me buy into it as a science because I need to be able to reproduce it if it's a science. Well, if you understood how the energies work, it's, okay, so technically, let's say like when we go into a Mercury retrograde, Mercury affects communication, Mercury affects technology. It's not going to have the same influence on everybody because my effects would be different than yours. Say I'm a more mercurial person. So I'm going to be affected differently. Say you have less mercury in your chart, you're going to be affected more strongly. Wait, wait, so wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about the planet? Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. You're going to have more misunderstandings with people when communicating when a mercury retrograde is taking place. You're going to have more uh, technical difficulties with computers and shit like that. But it's not going to be the same for everybody. So isn't it exact science? No, it's not the exact science. But at All the right. same time, there is a way to measure it, and it does follow. Is a that a thing that we know can say for fact that the planets affect our communications? When Mercury's in a certain way, it affects our communications. I've never heard that from Mercury nor other planet except the Sun, and it's not a planet. Well, the, the anyone sun else heard that a planet affects your communication? Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Some people, men connect with the Mars and whatever's going on. Women connect more with Venus apparently. Where's the science? You're just telling the, me. You're just saying it. Prove it. I thought you you're just it. telling me. Prove it. Oh, no. This is what I've heard. I, I don't have any factual okay. proof. But thought, this is just... Well, Jesse, the, the men are from Mars and women are from Venus. That refers to our uh, cycles, right? So men are on a longer cycle that coincides with the cycle of Mars. It's retrograde. Mars and Venus have the longest retrograde cycle. So like I said, this is all astrology. Venus is the feminine planet. Mars is the masculine planet. Mars stands for masculine energy, male energy, which uh, Mars is an allegory and anagram for arms, action, arms, A-R-M-S, M-A-R-S, Mars, right? The water planet, the action planet, the male planet, uh, the red planet. And then Venus, which is uh, coincides with women. And then you also see with the sun and the moon, the same thing. The sun is within masculine energy because men are on our sexual uh, cycle. is a 24-hour cycle like the sun. Sure. And women are on a 28-day cycle like the moon, the lunar cycle. I have so a question like, for you. We, we are I'm sorry. Advice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Professor. Just, just, just one second. Just one, one, sec one, one second, Sterling. Welcome, Mr. Pi. Um, your name is Miss Pumpkinhead. I'm not sure if that was a name switch that you had, but um, welcome to the panel, Mr. Pi. And I just wanted to say welcome to everybody from all our different platforms. We're live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Rumble. Someone said here. Um, I can't see the comments section. Is there anyone else that can't see it? So um, you're on Facebook, Joanne. Um, if you're seeing comments that you're not seeing is because other people are commenting on different platforms. And if you're not seeing any comments at all and you're on a phone, just swipe right and then swipe left. Because when you swipe right and then left, you usually reset the comments. But you'll only be seeing the comments that are on Facebook. This is a program called StreamYard where we can see comments from all the different platforms. And then Jack has streaming to his platform. So he's got also people in his comments that if you're on YouTube, you won't see the people commenting unless you're on his YouTube, apparently, you know, to the actual YouTube. But go ahead there, Sterling. When you say it's not like a perfect science or an exact science, if perfect or exact was 100%, what is this stuff you're talking about? As far as a number. You're talking to John? Yeah. You're talking to me? Yeah. Earlier you said what you were describing is not a perfect or exact science. I'm asking, how close is it? Um, well, it depends on which area you're looking at. but All the stuff uh, you just mentioned, generally? 
Yeah, what well, a communication shit. I just Googled that. They say the planets the have almost nothing. The only one they have is gravity, and it's insignificant. They're saying there is no, it uh, doesn't affect planets, don't affect. So if you're saying a science, I got to be able to redo it myself. Well, they, 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 they work on an axis from zero to 30 degrees. Um, so it's like varying on what degree there are each. Uh, degree correlates to a Sabian symbol. Sabian symbol symbols are energetic uh, frequencies. Um, the reason that we create symbolism is because uh, we don't have the ability to divide or rightly divide um, an energetic frequency. So we create a symbol to, to embody the wholeness of that, right? Like the, the all seeing eye and, and those type of frequencies. Same thing with planets, right? And Sabian symbols. Uh, so each degree represents a symbol. Each symbol has a specific meaning or a varying degree of that particular energy. Each planet represents uh, specific archetypes and has different things that it affects. Like I said, Mercury's communication. He's the messenger of the gods. You know, blah, blah, blah. Pluto. Is but it doesn't look planet. like Mercury affects communications. You haven't proven that, right? You're just saying it so uh, far. I'm sorry. I'm I don't mean to within be. Within humanity within humanity. Oh, okay, I thought you were talking about technology, satellites or something. Well, you'll experience it differently within, it is observable if you're uh, aware of it, you know, but if you don't understand it, which it takes years and years to learn astrology, I can't explain it to you like in 10 minutes on a podcast, I can just give you like a rundown on, you know. Remember, like we were talking about science. Don't tell me that you can't do it unless you're 50 years from now, you'll be able to learn it. If it's science, somebody should be able to do it now. I should be able to reproduce. I'm not trying to be confrontational. I'm saying that if there is particular alignments going on, you can see particular things going on in the planet. Um you know, uh, like all the lockdowns took place on a specific uh, astrological, uh, you know, alignment. Like that's just, you know, I think it was uh, uh, Mars Saturn squared or Mars Uranus squared or Saturn Uranus squared, something like that. They locked down every time in COVID on this particular alignment. Why would they do that? Because they're running off of the planetary energies. This is why. The masses don't know these things. They don't understand numerology. They don't understand astrology. They don't understand tarot. They don't understand the occult because they're told it's evil, right? No, no, I, that's, I, that's devil shit, right? No, you know, I and, believe and that these did, people believe they, it. I believe this part of your argument that those people believe it. I'm with you on all of that stuff, but I'm right. not so sure just because uh, they believe Mars is in retrograde, it will help. Uh, the people have a certain mood right now. I'm not sure that that's real because I can't see the connection. Mm. I'm sure well, they believe it and they make all that doesn't... shit because the astrological events, they're big believers in woo woo, but I don't see no real shit behind it. Um, well, I mean, just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not legit. That's all I'm going to say about that. You know, uh, if we can you cut it go, there. I told you the cat's sensitive. Right, if you, so, if you was to go you, and like look up the particular alignments and see what those planetary objects mean and what degrees they're at, and then you would go into the observable, the news, your own life on a collective or world scale, you would be able to see the influences on a planet. <coughs> yes, so if I did, if I did all those things, then I'd agree with you and see what you say. If I saw it on a bigger scale and you knew all the things I know, you're not doing a good job of proving anything while well, you're blaming me. Hey, if you can't understand it, you're not doing a good job of proving anything. I think your best proof is just trust me, bro. No. If we, you, and I'm sorry, just the last thing I'll say. I'm sorry, one more thing. Uh, and I'll, I'll let everyone else talk. But like, if you you know how earlier you ran through my dude, you ran through your whole chart, your sun and the moon, and the blood, the pipe, and whatever. And if we took people who had your exact same date of birth, right, who were born in the exact same place as you, and we had all the science behind us, what would we see that they have in common, and how would we? That's a great question. That, that any of this stuff is is isn't hogwash. Every. Uh... Uh, what kind of cancer born in June 23rd, uh, in a, a specific state or city? Uh, what do I, they have I in common that we could prove? 
I could, okay, so there's different factors. Uh, for one, your numerology is a factor in the algorithm of who you are. Your astrology is a factor in the algorithm of who you are. These things, you, the, the way you grow up, if I grow up in Cincinnati as opposed to fucking Chicago, I'm going to be a different type of person because my Well, let's assume location. we keep them in the same area uh, as close as possible. What can we I, prove? Well, you can keep it within well, a, there, a one there's, there's a lot a larger probability of you being certain personality types if you correlate with certain zodiacal energies. There is a larger, like Virgo, for instance, usually become teachers, you know? Is it any, um, you know, uh, is it just, um, you know, it, I'll just give you like for, you know, mine, for instance, my numerology, I'm a 33 life path, right? 33, master teacher. I'm a Virgo. That's a teaching sign. Everything I've done has been about speaking, communication, and teaching. All my astrology correlates to those things. I didn't use that. That's just what how I turned out. You know, I didn't find those things out about myself until after I was born on the 33rd parallel. Once again, the 33, right? Like all these things. Um, you know, that, I just met uh, I just met Joe Cool, and I think he might be Googling whether or not. Virgos are, are are the most likely to become teachers. And yeah, very like close. They're, they're and teachers. I feel like sometimes, yes. And I feel like sometimes when people talk too much and Virgo the, the role of a teacher, they don't listen enough and they don't unbold themselves enough to be the student. That's not true. A real teacher <laughs> is, is a is a student first. So a real so teacher I, is <clears throat> always studying. You know, Would and you, I'm not saying I'm a teacher. I'm saying I'm a speaker. But everything about someone that teaches also speaks. It's a verbal, it's a verbal yeah. thing, right? So you agree my that North Node is Gemini, which is the, the North Node of communication. Why the third is valuable sign, which is number three. Three is communication. We look at um, masculine energy is number one in numerology. Feminine energy is number two. One plus two is three. Three equals the child. Three plus three equals six. Six represents the family. This is like Everything in the, the um, uh, English language, all the, the letters, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, they all have a numerical value. This is how you know, it, I've looked these up. Uh, this is the code I've, of the matrix. I've heard this conversation, uh, right? I've looked it up, and it will tell you, uh, literally, depending where you look, the way you say three represents family or whatever, if you change the source, uh, 87 different books, uh, sources will tell you it represents 87 different things. Uh, you can grab anyone you want and say three represents family, four represents family, five no. represents and family, three represents so and so. The study of numerology. That's not that's not true. Just like the, the black and white Masonic checkerboard floor. The reason that they use a black and white checkerboard floor is because of the polarity. Black, if you add up the word black. It's 11. You add up the word white, it's 11. 11, 11, right? 11 is the opening of something. It's the opening of a portal, the opening of a gateway. It's also about healing. It's also about influence. 33, influence. 22, a builder. These are master numbers in numerology. The reason that they use racial wars between black and white people is because the 11, 11 energy, black and white, they're diametrically opposed. It's polarities. This is how duality works. This is the code of the matrix. This is how they get all of us you know, mesmerized by their, their, their bullshit and get us to go along with the, the different agendas that they put out for us. I and think you're saying that the astrological energies. I think you're saying that I, I, I hope you're saying that there are different sources of, of, and beliefs of what numbers these things represent, but the ones who have it right are the ones who are running this planet. The ones that they say it represent, uh, they know the code, uh, and it is the code that they talk about is the real one. It's not just it's not just a they thing. This is every civilization on the planet. I just Earth. told you there's 89 other books that say three stands for kid, family, wealth, that says different stuff. Don't tell me that everybody agrees that the number th represents or Mars represents the same thing that those people represent. You're just trying to be a contrarian. You've been doing it the whole time, bro. You haven't really known what you've been talking about the whole time. But I'm but I've been trying to be rude to you. I just keep letting you go on. Just because Dismissive. you're trying to do what you're doing. Dismissive. But, yeah. <laughs> it's very dismissive. It came across as dismissive. Jack, what do you guys think? Just get someone else's thoughts in here. The idea of 
astrology. I do trust there is a science to it. It's there's been I mean, what is science? Science is identification of patterns, patterns from they can be proven nature. Well, by other everybody, everybody else has been able to reproduce your experiment and well, have the same results. On. That is the definition of science. Ide ideally, yes. However, if you look into the facts, <laughs> there's actually discussions right now about I can't remember the term, uh, the reproducibility. Uh, problem, the phenomenon that much of science today involves a lot of data and results that isn't necessarily reproducible. So let's not really, get there's a lot of that going on, on now. To, okay, go ahead. Let's not get too hung up on it. Okay, my ass, words matter. Stop right. and stop thinking y'all could just throw shit out hey, there and yo. saying a motherfucker pose accepted. The definition right. of science is being able hey, to yo. repeat an experiment again, uh, over yeah. and over and have the same yeah. results. That is the definition of yeah. science. Yep, yeah. hey Joe, words matter. Why? Why do words matter? So we What's... can communicate. Yeah. So if you say science, yeah. I must know what you mean. Okay. Oh, if right. you don't fucking define it for me, we're not communicating. I'm not well, in the wrong. The, the the purpose of words is for communicating, for sharing ideas. But if we yes. get so caught up on the words, dude. I'm not caught up in the word. I'm just trying to communicate have, what does science well, Joe, mean. Joe, Joe, let okay, him finish. Joe. No, this nigga trying to bull smoke and bullshit. I know, no, oh. just, just let him finish. Just let him finish his thought, please. Sweet. I wanted to bring it back to to kind of your patterns of behavior, Joe. Without you can do that. Go ahead. Being an offense, right? You have been showing patterns of being a contrarian. And I'm okay with that. I don't think it's a negative. Okay. What else? And I'm pretty sure a couple of you guys yeah, even know each other. Terrible. I think this is the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen on anybody's channel ever. And I've I'm okay. I'm used to soft ass niggas. What else? No, you're a pussy, bro. That's why you get on here and talk on a computer screen. Right uh, now, so, you want to beat yeah, me up? No, yeah, I, I, no, it says I, more I, about I, you than me. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no, could you were talking on a computer screen because you're from the safety of a screen? You're, you're mad, bro. it's because you're disrespectful. I'm just talking, the only time you ever get attention, please, you probably wasn't hugging up as a fucking kid. Right. So, disrespectful. anything to add, anything it's to it's add, bitch shit, bro. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's bitch ass, shit. yeah. And you're looking you're so like good right now, it's fantastic. I don't care. You looking like a dumbass. I know. I I'm don't care. You sound like my ex, nigga. I care about both of you. And seriously, um, is it, you know, John? <laughs> we were talking it's, about it's uh, the astrology. Nature. You believe in astrology is what we were talking about. If you want to go I, back. I, I want to hear from Mr. Pye. I was, no, I just wanted to <clears throat> let Jack finish his thought. For what he had to say with what they were talking about so um, well, i appreciate you. joe being a contrarian mm -hmm. and questioning everything that's what he does and i don't think most of the time he does it in a very rude manner until he starts interrupting which fine whatever but let's just get let's get to the point like let's let other that. people like let, let's let's let other people have an All observation right. i'll do about better what, yeah, because you're getting your feelers a little bit, Joe, but not too much because no uh, one can, like, you live your life like you're a strong dude, so you don't need to bow yeah, down. Like, I guess. Let me, hold on, in his defense, though, I can understand, like, if you hear claim after claim after claim after claim after claim without producing uh, reliable um evidence that you can demonstrate you kind of do want to stop someone and say whoa right there right there hold on and when Thank they you. go to explain that one thing with another claim after claim after claim you do sometimes need people like joe who will Thank say you. hang on a second here but you know yeah we all I, if I, I, I do I, it clumsily i, I you just talk over it top of nature. somebody and you don't let them speak or anything you just try to question every other word you're not it's not a debate and it's like, that ain't what this was for. It's just disrespect. Okay. And y'all hey, know each other. You're trying to play stupid. That's what I mean. Like, all I hear is, is I want to say right. shit on a pose. Just roll yeah. with it. All right. That's all well, I hear. Well, who's who's the guy on the left or above me? John. John. Is name. Yeah, so I came in a little late, so I apologize. Um, but what it does sound like is that you're making a lot of, like, um very big claims 
um, that some people or a lot of people like want answers for. So well, when I go watch my channel, I, 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 I'm not I, I just sit I just, and I give you a two-hour dissertation on astrology. Like I'm, I, I, I broke down as much as I can with like, trying to keep the conversation moving. Like I can't tell, explain every little planetary energy to you. That took me a decade to learn. Go. Subscribe. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doubting that. I was just going over and saying, what did Jack think? And then they got all fucking insane. Sure. I know and my guy, And my guy, I think it was John in the corner up there. We don't, we don't want a two-hour dissertation on nothing. But what I, what, what I think some people would like to focus on is just one. No, yeah, I just small. want your 15 minutes. That's all you want. Hey, my guy. No, I just my want guy. your 15 minutes, bro. Hey, That's obvious. Hey, Hey, my God, I didn't interrupt you. I, I, I never interrupt anybody. If you ever notice that about me, I, I'll wait for hours. So listen, what I'm saying is some people would rather you focus on one very small thing and hammer it out. So just to, to, to like straw man and say, oh, well, what do you want? A two hour dissertation? No, we don't want that. We want a very specific answer to a very specific question. And Thank that you, is sir. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, if you're going to. And if, if you if you would get it, if you quit interrupt him, but all three of you know each other, would we'll stop playing stupid. I don't know none of these cats. Channel. I don't know none of them two okay. cats. I don't. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So you're wrong. I, I, yeah. So I'm like, if when, when people come off with omniscient um, ideas of the universe and the world and that they know something else than anybody else, it's to me, it's concerning. Because none of us really know shit. Maybe we've studied some things, but it's like it's time to say that too. Yeah, like like act like an authority on everything um, is a little. I'm being sus. asked a fucking question. It's not acting like authority on everything. That's what I mean. That's your ego, not mine. Sorry I got about you. that. Sorry, I you got feel you. like I'm just coming. I'm coming position. out fun. No, I'm just, no, I'm no, showing... no, Stop, stop interrupting me. That's no, you interrupted, interrupted him, but he was no, talking. No, no, but you're hey, you speaking you're about me. Yeah, the, the, the truth is you're speaking about me. You're trying to get me going. The truth is, like you're saying, if you were me, that's how you would feel about things. If you, that you would think you knew everything. I'm being asked a fucking question. I'm, I'm giving an answer no to the question. The host no, of you interrupted. the Don't podcast ask asked me. Like, how does that mean thinking I know everything? This is fucking ridiculous. My God, dude. Like when you when you realize that you get into your feelings because you don't have the facts and reason to back it up, and it's only then in those moments that you get heated like this. I do have then, the facts and reason. You're just it's three people on one trying to fuck. My God, get, my God, get, listen, get a goddamn reaction. Right, right, my God, listen. Even but, but uh, even when yes, I've been on is it, I've, Jesse, bro. <laughs> I've jumped in. Okay, oh, let's ahead, let's okay. move the energy. Let's move the energy. Seriously. Otherwise, I'm just gonna wrap this up. Um, yeah. So well, I'm, trying to be helpful. I'm trying to be helpful. Wanted, I, I know. I, I appreciate. I appreciate what you were saying, but I just want to move on from the energy. He said. He said, said. Let's what, just move on from that energy. What you want to talk about? What you want to talk Jack, about? Jack wanted to share something. I would like to talk about religion when Jack is done. Tell you what. Um, <laughs> I was just hoping we could change the change the energy and change. Let's the do religion energy. because this okay. will put uh, John on good ground uh, because religion is something or, or spirituality or religion is something that there there won't be a lot of facts and shit for us to back up. We'll all be on. So will you let him ground. finish, man? You did it. Again. <laughs> I'm done with this, bro. I Joey. appreciate you having me on. This is a joke, bro. I mean, I appreciate you having me on. Everybody, check me out. Best in podcast official. Uh, so you're gonna wait. You're gonna run. Uh, you're gonna run when shit gets tough. I've been on here for three hours. You've been on here for an hour, and I don't owe you none of my time. I come on here for Jesse, not you, not to debate with you, not to debate with nobody, Joe Cool, or anybody else. I'm not doing I'm, this. This is trash. This, this it's is disrespectful. About... It's uncouth. It's no class, and you, you guys look like fucking goofs anyway. I want to apologize talk. to you. You want to know what I'm talking about? about? Go to my channel, subscribe. I'm out I will. Here, bro. I will Thank you for having me on, Jesse. But I'm going to go there. and hanging out. You should. Go there. I think it's a good channel. I guarantee you, I'll subscribe and enjoy it. And um, yeah, I'm so sorry that. Yeah, I just want to apologize for my terrible behavior. I'm ashamed. No, no, you didn't do anything wrong there, Sterling. 
Yeah, I know. You have nothing to apologize. You, <laughs> you, you, you have nothing to apologize for. So I yeah, I know, dude. Here. I've been just trying to go through the comments. I kind of let things play out. I'm trying not to babysit, micromanage. I'm letting people All right. just go to go through their thing, right? Let so me. I'm hoping people can work things out without me having you. to get. You hey, know, you're doing a good job, my guy. Right, that's thank that's you. Been, your I've been focusing a, a lot job. on trying to get through all the comments and stuff. So yeah, allowing good, them and listening as long as nobody got too disrespectful through each other where, you know, I had to step in and I didn't really see that. It was just back and forth trying to find common ground. And obviously yes. we, we weren't able to find that. So I just wanted to change the energy because, you know, that was going nowhere. Hey, and, I, and, uh, and, I, and, and I want to say one, one thing real quick that I wanted Jack to finish a fucking thought. I was going to ask I, you about since, the truth. Since, since, I've, since, since I've been on here, I have not let, like, he hasn't got to finish one single thought. Joe and I know, I know I'm late in it, so I apologize for that, and I'll, I'll yield. No need to apologize for that. I actually appreciate that. Thank you very much. And Joe, dude, I've gotten used to your interruptions, but he wasn't wrong, man. I mean, Ooh. you guys, you guys were jumping. I mean, there was a period. No, 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 just me. Don't do you guys, name, please. I'm sorry, I just interrupted. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, he just did the exact same thing. What he just said, <laughs> he just proved what he was saying. That's hilarious. <laughs> but at least he caught it. Joe noticed it, right? He did. That and was that, great. And we were just that, trying to do better. Yes. And that's that's all I ask. It, not, I mean, I wish that conversation could have gone a little bit different. And what I was trying to get in to offer is that there is a science to astrology. How does it work? Who knows, man? But there are patterns that have been identified and repeated and passed down through numerology through all of these woo woo methods but if you if you if you if you can accept some of the concepts there's patterns to it and as they say the billionaires they they pay attention to astrology so if the successful people the people in control are paying attention to woo woo in fact, maybe we should listen too. And it sounded like John had some knowledge on that stuff. The astrology. You're both very intellectual, Joe. And, you know, to find a common ground opposed to what was going on, I wish it would more because it would have been a really deep conversation. So I'm not saying you uh, or him. I'm I just am. saying I wish I wish it could have been a little bit more, you know, like not so at each other opposed to I, just I, talking I about information personally, uh, personally i feel like i did that guy a favor anyone who's been running around making sand stuff like that and no <laughs> one challenges him his best thing that ever happened to him was walking into this room tonight and the best thing that ever happened was i was the cat who was in this uh room tonight the rest of his days i guarantee you will go soft and unopposed uh, i did him a favor tonight I assure you that's that's not a that's not an accurate or fair representation. <laughs> Bitch, I'm my, right. Joe, well, go ahead. You can lie to yourself and tell yourself any narrative, any fairy tale you want to believe. I'm but, lying. I gotta be wrong. Neither one well, of us know. Be nice. We don't know. On my opinion, you, you think, your Joe, opinion, to, not a Joe, lie. You, Joe, you just painted the picture as this was the best thing that ever happened to him. That's my opinion. It's not you're a lying lie. To yourself you said it's you. a lie. You're probably, you're lying to yourself to jump to that conclusion that that man has never been tested before. And that Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe Cool was finally the one to stand up and test the man on his knowledge. Come on, dude. Do you know the difference from a lying opinion? What I said, the first of all, that was your characterization of it. My shit is that he is not tested on his opinion. Certainly not enough. And I stand by that. It's just my opinion. Now, your I opinion know. is, it's I guess, opinion. the opposite. He gets tested often. It's I an opinion. Know. I don't know. I'm no, not I do. Why? So stop calling my shit a lie. 
Well, Joe, if I got opinion. Hey, Joe, if I've got tell you what, tell you what, after this conversation, right? If I think that Joe is Joe left this upset at me today, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> there he goes. If if I think you left upset, I'm not gonna go paint myself some fucking fairy tale where I was Mr. Perfect and Joe was just completely wrong. Nor would I. I wouldn't do no weird well, shit like that. that. Nor would I care if. Said. No, that's not what I just that's, said. That's what I just heard you say. Maybe no. and it's not what you just said. It's what you I heard. said. Paint a picture. Because if someone left mad, I wouldn't go paint a picture. I painted no picture. That is your interpretation was why I'm beating this. The difference between a lion and an opinion uh, drum so hard. You seem to think that my opinion uh, is somehow worthy of your fucking criticisms as attack. It is just an opinion. You can't yeah. label me a liar and nefarious because it disagrees with yours. Well, I can tell you when you're lying to yourself. I can tell you. You when can the have your told. opinion of that. You yes. When your opinion is contradictory to facts. And Joe, I'm so telling your opinion you is facts. You have no fucking Let's idea. I thought we at least know that Joe, yours is an opinion your, too. Hey Joe, hey Joe, can you get out of your feelers? Oh, I don't need to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. Stay with what I we're know, talking you about. You don't like hearing shit when it's addressed to you. You like casting. You stay on that topic. Shit. I am. You're the topic. Your behavior. It was an opinion versus facts. Out of control, Joe. Oh, that's your opinion again, or is it a fact? Do you know the difference? Well, let's let's chill out. And let's I'm just chill. I'm not fine with this. Hey, shit, Joe, Jack. Joe, participate. Hey, hey, Joe, participate just for a moment. Hey, there's a point I said, chill out and let's reflect on what we each experienced here on the past couple of minutes. So Fuck. I'm alleging that your energy and your patterns have not yeah. been real productive. Yeah, what yeah, is yeah, your but... thoughts on those facts? All right. My first thought is we're changing the subject of, of what we were just talking about. Uh, has my shit been productive? You're saying those are facts. The first shit that popped in my head is again, you have no idea what facts is, different facts and opinions. Why you're, I know. and I don't mean to deflect no, here, why yeah. you remain so angry. Uh, if you understood that it's just an opinion and I am entitled to it, I didn't harm you or no one else, no one said you'd you're be not. much calmer. Joe. All I'm offer all I'm offering to you, dude. No, 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 no. Don't change it. One thing at a time. Yeah. One, no, no, no. Right. I was still answering. No, I'm not done yet. Uh, right. Your thing was uh, with the fact uh, that uh, how do I uh, what do I think about the fact that I offered nothing productive here? I disagree that it was a fact. I already yes. Am I entitled to my opinion without you talking over me, which you don't like when I do? Oh my God. Uh, uh, no. Uh, Jack. All right, myself, breathe. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to distract. I don't want to fucking deflect, though. Uh, you do. Uh, I'm entitled to my opinion. Of and course. you're quick. You're the guy who's quick to say you're painting a narrative. You're lying to yourself. You're trying right. to hurt someone. Stop characterizing my opinion. Uh, okay. Give us some validity right now. In All my right. opinion, yeah. I was the best thing smoking for that dude tonight. Am yeah. I entitled to that opinion or am I liar and nefarious? You decide. I didn't see the whole thing, so I didn't hear that guy's um, rap or whatever. So uh, I don't I don't know if um, Joe's questions to him were valid or not. So I can't really state my opinion for That's beyond that. So... Uh, I just kind of saw the guy in a an authority like his mode was he omniscient knowing something that we don't and I always question that over everybody else but maybe maybe he has some something I'm willing to learn that's the whole point Joe's, I wouldn't listen to that. Joe's Joe does Joe questions interrogates in a way that could be very provocative and 
Apparently, and, I don't and, get it, man. And, you and really and believe you would question me about something I believe in, man. You can question me to the depths, and we down. there will be no fucking argument because I have a reason why I believe the things I and I can explain it to you. Yeah. Well, motherfuckers who don't have reasons who just going on feelings, those feelings come out, and I'm sorry. Yeah, so but that's that, the truth. That showed something to me that the guy ran away when things got a little heated or hot. I don't know. And he has so we I'll, were all I'll attacking go check out his him. Channel. I'll That's go on his sign. channel and check him. Also I need... been here for, he's also been here for three hours and things, right? Doesn't mean he had to stay yeah, all didn't... night, right? You know, yeah, there's, didn't... doesn't mean that's why he ended he's up probably you know, tired. running away. Anything could be any kind of possibilities that we can assume on. It's just sometimes people get frustrated when they're trying to talk and every time they're trying to get something out, there's always, what about this? What about this? And just trying to get clarifications before a person can actually get that but, out of their mouth. If someone that's not actually what wait, happened, though. Wait until, but it happens all the time, Joe. That's like, not yes, what well, happened tonight. So, but, hey, well, yes, I've, I've seen it so many times. Like, he was trying to talk and you needed clarification, so you jumped and he wasn't able to finish a lot of things he wanted to to say that that's not what happened you're trying here. to get clarification or you're trying to challenge her but i saw it joe so i'm not sure what do you mean that's not what happened i saw it happen many times all right well maybe that's a, a, a minor part of what really happened here he got frustrated because he couldn't answer the questions that's how simple it was joe tell yourself whatever opinion you want i do i don't need your permission for nothing I know. Jack. But joe right you're not accepting so, the other opinions the other the other facts that were involved that would have mean that nor are you and these are just Joe. opinions okay but Joe, sorry go. facts if you go back and look at you, the number of times you interrupted him and me and i can it'd be no different from the I rest of you niggas perfect right i can perfectly relate to his frustration it's what i get accused of being triggered for on my own stream what it is, is a lack of respect and respect and self restraint, Joe. This yeah. constant interruption, asking questions and digging into things that really have no relevance to the point. Can I interrupt right here? You're talking about two different things, and the right. truth just came out. The first thing you're talking about interruptions that's a straw. The second thing, the truth is digging into shit. Talk about what we want to talk about. It does nothing but aggravate me when motherfuckers talk about something else. The truth is me digging into them. Can we agree on that? Because that's the truth. You're digging into imagined disagreements, right? There's nothing wrong with digging There's in, nothing imagined that's, about that's, that's, science. That's, 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 you know, but, Joe, but Joe, there's Black nothing thing. wrong with digging into what someone's saying. But let the person get it out and then challenge them. But when, it, if, when someone's trying to get something out and they're interrupted and interrupted, interrupted, it gets very frustrating for the person. I would agree with that, Jack, but that is... happens to Jack over... So you just didn't let me finish. I, I know, I finish, agree, finish, but, finish, finish, but, finish, but... But I'm, I'm just trying to finish You're my just thought. repeating your thought that you just said two minutes ago. You're repeating the same verbatim thing you just said. I know people fucking get mad when it interrupted. And I'm going to repeat myself and say, yes, but that's not what happened tonight. And we're going to loop. <laughs> Joe will believe whatever he wants to believe. We all do. Yes. And this is why don't we care what is true? Why don't we care about what is being mutually shared, mutually experienced? Yes. Why don't we, we care about the objective truth? I'm not sure there is one here. Is there? That's, I don't know. Well, there is. There is. We're, I think, you know what? I love you guys. And I don't mean to be, I feel like I'm kind of critic, criticizing Joe. And I didn't want I'm to. I'm okay with that, though. You got the right guy. Come on. But it's not about criticizing. We just all want everyone to do better and be better. So Yes, I wouldn't take it in a horrible way. You can offer some thing that you're seeing and it can finally, he can see it then he will do better because he doesn't and, have any maliciousness in his heart. And like if I disagree, don't get mad and, at me. Even though, he's, even though he's jumping and wanting to know and he's interrupting, it's not because he's doing that to be a jackass. He's doing that because of curiosity. He's wanting to clarify. He's wanting, okay, he just said something that I don't agree with, so I need to get that clarification. So he's jumping without waiting for the person to just finish his thought. And he does that not just now. You do that in most places that I'm I sure. see. Oh, yeah. So that's why I'm not, when you say, well, it didn't happen now, but I see that happening constantly. And it's not a malicious intent. 
It's just an intent right. mostly for clarification. Let me but rephrase. It is, kind of rude, it is kind of rude and ignorant. You know, for Let me rephrase. Not it did happen. Let me rephrase. It did happen. But people are talking about it like that's what was the cause of what happened tonight. And it was not. What happened tonight was his theories were challenged, which is why I can tell they were never challenged because of his reactions. They were bad. Uh, he assumed that everybody coming here to attack me. He's seeing demons everywhere. Uh, uh, and you know, I, don't, I don't know. That's my uh, perception of that, of uh, what happened. And I forgot what the fuck I was doing. Somewhere with whatever the Jack was saying. And it's fair to have that perception, right? Everybody can see it how they see it. But just take yeah. the word that this happens when someone's trying to get things out and you're jumping on them just to get clarification and a person doesn't able to get their thoughts out. It's frustrating for people. I so get that. It's a, lot, it's, it's a lot harder for people to defend whatever position. That yeah, is if let me be honest with you. Again, all I just right. didn't finish my thought with you wanted to already change the subject to what you wanted to talk about, right? Like, I was just trying to finish my thought. Yes, I didn't want the moment to pass. I was going to say, let me be honest with you. Uh, uh, so you know that the, the truth is, I thought I was being like extremely patient. I was letting so much shit fly in between them times I jumped on them. There's and so much shit I wanted to jump on. But you're, you're working on, but it just seems that, you know, that's kind of why you know, it kind of went the way it was because he felt frustrated that he wasn't able to get out his thoughts, right? And I can do better said, not to frustrate him. He said that a bunch of times that you keep interrupting me, you keep interrupting me. Like he was saying that over and over because he was just trying to finish his flow. And it's not a bad thing to challenge someone, but there's always a respect part. Just wait till they finish and then say, okay, but I know for you, a lot of times you... So many thoughts go by. You don't want to lose your thought, right? You just good. So you want to jump in right there at that time because you might not remember <laughs> the thought later on. So you feel the need to jump right in. Like I, a lot what, of that. I see what's going on, but for a lot of people, take that as disrespect. Yeah, I could do better, right? I could uh, do better, and as long as you guys remind me to help me uh, do better, I'm alright with that. Yeah. So it, I, I was. That, that, that was pointed out to me I'll, when I was talking to my friend. I get really excited <laughs> about things. And when someone's saying something and I agree, I'm like, uh, I immediately just want to say what I'm thinking right at that moment because I feel like I'm going to lose it. But after many times of people that I respect pointed out, I mean, that's a communication flaw. Like, Do we agree with the second part, though, my part that I believe that I agree with you guys? I, certainly, I've been accused of interrupting. No chance that you're wrong there. Zero chance. Uh, but I am saying that that's a smaller part. The really the reason he ran was not because he tired. And the reason he really got mad at me, the interruption shit was smaller than me questioning his beliefs. Do anybody agree, agree with that? that? I can't agree with that because he wasn't fully able to get out his thoughts without being interrupted. So the frustration kicked in. So I can't agree to you. That's why there may be a part of why that was, but I couldn't get to that part because he kept on getting interrupted without him fully being able to express his thoughts in a lot of the scenarios. So I, I can't, I can't agree with you there. Jack, what do you think? Do you think it was mostly because of interruptions or what Jess was saying? A bit of uh, he was mad because he couldn't get his uh, thoughts out because I kept interrupting. Or uh, was it the fact that I was uh, was trying to push him to uh, prove what you're saying is true? I think some of all. All right. And uh -huh. I think he was kind of surprised by what he was, what was growing. Yeah, and I agree. I think part of that ended up with he didn't know how to respond or how to react to get it to change and then frustration but I agree. Yeah. but hey so, right. for, so for me if if you're and, and i came in at the end of it so i can't really i mean i i can't i can't really judge right, right or wrong you know like i didn't hear a spiel it yeah. was just it was just the energy that i saw and okay. I don't have to be right or wrong, but if you're if you're convicted in your beliefs, um, even yeah. if you think, oh, these people all know each other because I saw that 
he said that he's like because uh, like, he, felt, he felt like it was an attack. Like this was uh, this wasn't coordinated. I just I know Jesse. I love Jesse. I love Jack. I love Joe. Whatever. I just I, chim- I, I chimed in. He was a new I'm face. Whatever. I'm whatever. You came to and me, Ster- you no, whatever. no, Sterling, Sterling, I haven't no, 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 seen you. I mean, that's what happened. You went around the circle and it came to me. You said whatever. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, Sterling. That was I, funny, dude. That was funny. Go ahead. Keep going, man. Well, because, I, because yeah, I know them better than just I know you, going. Sterling. Just keep going. I just, keep going, just want, to, want to say something here. So someone says $100 to go for the rest of the night. No, you couldn't give me 1000 You couldn't give me 10000 I don't. I'm not. The money means shit to me, okay? So... I, I would never disrespect someone for money. I, however, I would disrespect myself. I'd hop off for a hundred dollars for Jesse in a heartbeat, uh, and uh, and I'd, I, I no 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 didn't. that's I wouldn't I wouldn't even allow it. I just shut the stream down. Like I, that's not. <laughs> I mean, I mean, not and Sterling, that, that wasn't that wasn't meant as disrespect. Um, I just don't you know could, you that well. Like, I it's think so adorable. Trolling, bro. You're absolutely adorable that you think you could disrespect me or hurt my feelings. Right. It is just I, you, I'm right. sorry. I ain't. Adorable. Yeah. But listen, I watched a lot of epistemology channels. Epistemology meaning like the study of knowledge and how you know something and what convinces you that something's true. And one of those right. channels that I found here on YouTube is Anthony Magna Bosco. And Anthony Magna Bosco has a delivery and approach that's different from what we've seen tonight. And it's what I strive to be. He doesn't make claims. He only asks questions. And you can guide people to your belief much easier when you're asking them questions as opposed to stating your opinion. And there's Very good. One. And I've never seen anyone and I've been on thousands of these live panels, guys. I've never seen anyone leave here with their minds changed. They're always going to convince themselves as to that they won or that it wasn't fair or that, that it was rigged. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, just now there I is just, one example, if I may. There is one example of the amazing Dan. And he got his own, he came to a college campus in Texas, and he encountered Anthony Magna Bosco on the college campus, who asked him very soft questions, very friendly. And it was years after that encounter that Dan wrote Anthony Magna Bosco an email and said, you know what? I thought about it for three years, (laughs) and I've now left my faith. So if you think you're going to get someone and you're going to badger them and oh. into conforming to what you think here on a live stream, you need Very to good. rethink your, your, whole, your whole perspective if if you want to be effective. Oh, but man, if, you sure. mental, if you want to flex your own mental superiority, then you no. do it that way. But if no, you but truly want to change the way you ask right. them questions and play it for the long run. Thank Very you. Good. Hey. I'm going to look more into that asking question shit. If I wouldn't it high so much, I would ask you the guy's name, but I'd forget it anyway. So, All right. Can I speak? And then Anthony Magna Bosco. <laughs> Very good. I'll do it now. So, so I disagree with what you said because my mind has changed. Um, my views have changed. Over a lot of what people have, like, people i've learned from in the last like four years no and he I, said on the spot i'm sorry i interrupted but okay so, correct so on the spot i mean maybe on the spot someone just goes oh wow i have an epiphany i mean do people have epiphanies online maybe You're, maybe he's right in that but but these are this is about planting seeds meeting people that press your mental into what's the word acuity and making you think outside the box and pressing your limits because you can and should maybe listen or maybe you shouldn't maybe you take it in and we just all should hear each other it's like there are the people that speak the most they, they have the, the probably the least wisdom i believe like the people that listen like they just people that speak they want to be heard and they may right. not have all the knowledge so they don't have all the knowledge and then when they get asked or probed about their knowledge they get very defensive divisive and run away i guess <laughs> thoughts panel <laughs> i was thinking about holding a, a different I, thought I, most I, of the could, time could and i it, lost it yeah. better myself i'm pretty sure i did say <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. At some point tonight, but anyway, yeah, 
well said. Very, very well said. And, you know, I think we're all learning to do better, to be better. I think part of this technology has caused a really big disconnect in the communication. And we're really trying, we're socially retarded and we're trying to, you know, yes. figure that we're trying to build these bridges um, opposed yes. to all the walls that they want us to have between each other. And I think that, you know, I, uh, communication is key. And once we start to figure out and master ourselves to be able to do better, communicate better in hey, situations, the world is only going to become a better place because of it. Jesse and Jack, um, so does that mean, I think, and you address you guys too, I think I got to master the feelings game, right? Because if I'm going to communicate with bad people better, I got to do that. Yes. Yes. And I think it's patience. You, it's Just wait till the person finishes and then ask them and challenge Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, what you're saying. The challenging parting is great. That was a joke. I Check out Anthony Magna purpose. Bosco, Joe Cool. Because I misspelled it. Magna Bosco. Yeah, it starts with the M A G, and you can look up epistemology. Okay. And because you do, Magna have, Bosco, it came yes, up street you, epistemology. You do, have, you do have a lot of the knowledge, and you do ask a lot of the right questions at the right times. But you could do it better if your goal is to is to change the way people think. And I believe that it is. But I, I really believe if you just change it a little bit, you can uh, get effective out here. I ain't gonna lie, a lot of my shit is out of anger. I feel like I'm being kind. And I feel like this nigga's been a dick or whatever for too long. And most of my shit is a response to that shit. Or he's <laughs> ducking my questions. That's when I, I uh, dig in. What if Check. I told you I felt the same way? What if I told you I felt the exact same way the same times you felt them? Well, what is the difference? I don't know. You've been watching this nigga, Anthony Magnavosco. Exactly. And uh, he tells so you to pull your, pull your punches and choose your battles wisely. I have a, you can't pick up somebody like that who's going to rattle off 48 claims in 15 seconds. <laughs> right. What do I do? Right. You right, pick I have one. A you I have pick a question one. for Talcott. You pick one you know he's wrong on and you hold him down to it. All right. So I have a Go question. Ahead, it won't Jack. be hard. It let won't Jack be hard ask this question. Pick let Jack, I mean, let dude ask this question. I'm okay. So, so earlier I was on flows. Um, but then Jack. You, you said there's people saying things it's like, um, I don't know if you came in at the right time or not, but um, what I was saying or chiming in about you was, and I, it, it, my opinion shouldn't even matter, but my, my, my thoughts are watching and observing someone, a man, progress into a better man. Jack, you talking about? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's probably about trash it. harder than yeah. all of us. Yeah, right? so I'm not. Yeah, so I'm not like sucking Jack's dick or anything. I just. Why not? Give I think, a shot. I, you never know. No, I know. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I, I feel a lot of people can feel the energy of a person, and Margot Robbie was on the panel. Other people, and I said, "How do you know as a behavioral psychologist yeah. who guy is or what is or isn't?" And to me, it's it's fascinating to for anyone to know who someone actually is. And then if if he's having these struggles in his own life personally that we really don't know that really happen, but everyone has a judgment on. Um, my proclivity and my projection or conjecture for him was maybe this is a long game in his son will see all this and see his restraint and see how much he's changed just like I have not even being the guy's best friend or that's good, dope that'll get him so, in the door and then Jack will have to do the rest of the work no, that'll because, get him in the door so I'm saying like he's endured this and he's accepted this and this is his way to communicate with the outside world because no one else in his inside world will do it right so yeah. this, this is a new thing that he's transversing. Like he's trying to figure out how to communicate this way and maybe it will help him with the people around him now because we're all trying to, I think the real people are trying to give him, like not enable him. I, I'm sorry to speak to you in the third person, Jack, but like, like observe 
who you have been online and that you to take it in and to take it upon yourself to make changes, whether or not we, uh, that's just who you are. So you are this, a good person and you're starting to show it more and more. So if you can, if everyone can see that, how is that, going see that. To, how, how is that not going to spread in his very, very close world? All right. In his life? Okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'll stop. Right. I'll stop there. Right. So that wasn't a hate on you at flow states. Actually, it was right. me. Okay. It was me like, right. um, okay. Saying some things that I have observed okay. because I think that you have the power of all manifestation to do what you're going to do. Okay. And it's going to lead up to what you are and who you are Perfect. as a person, Jack. Okay. I'll stop. Perfect. Thank you. The, be the best, the best liars that I ever had. And I don't have a lot, but like the best ones, I write them down. So I'm one of those people. I'll write it down. And I'll sit on it for 45 minutes and I'll hit you with a, a belly shaking laugh. You know, um, you know that those are the things that I say. Then everything else, I try to just ask because right. why else would you be coming in here with an agenda to try to change people and teach people? How arrogant is that? Well, Instead, I'm a bit arrogant. That is absolutely my agenda. Uh, well, I don't know how much of it is to change, but certainly to put it out there that there are other options and uh, blah blah blah. I think yeah, I maybe say change. Fuck this. I, I, I would like Jack's response to what I had to say. I, was, I, I wasn't finished, and also I'm I'm talking very very uh, blanketly about what I've seen across the board of YouTube. Don't take this personally. If the shoe fits, though, please put it on. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, when you as soon as you come in here with an agenda, you failed. Okay, so like, I mean, ask questions, mix it up, push back, absolutely. But if you're pushing your own narrative, then you've stopped being a student and you want, you think you're I, the teacher. I think in some ways, yes, I would agree with that. And I think in some ways that's on my uh, duty out here under God type shit to red evil, blah, blah. And, and in the course of that, I see people who I think are struggling. I could be wrong. This is obviously arrogant. Uh, but I think their life would go better if they made this change, did that better. Than fuck, mostly because they're whining, they're complaining to me all the fucking time. So now I think I'm certainly entitled to uh, to give my fucking opinion on some shit. And yes, uh, I'll be patient and try to make some changes. Yes. Okay. I have an agenda to change some nigga that's crying to me all the time about how miserable he is. Yes, I have an agenda to change that nigga. Then good. Let's do it the right way, and let's do it the most effective way. Let's don't do. I let's don't do it in a way that gets him to tuck his tail and run away and claim victory, because then you did not accomplish. Absolutely, I can't and argue you're with kidding, that. You're kidding yourself if you think you accomplished that tonight. You didn't. He is just as adamant as he ever was. And Kathy says, "Can you let them mute their boxes when people are speaking to tell, um, you know, when they're done speaking?" And no, I just. I want people to learn how to communicate better. And I think that, you know, if you're muting people and sending them back and all these kind of weird shit that kind of happens, it just frustrates people even more. And, you know, if they're not, you know, being able to communicate, then that'll have to wonder if I should bring them up or not. But we all want everybody to do better, communicate better. And I don't think you know, babysitting people, muting boxes, or, you know, having everybody mute until somebody's ready to talk. It doesn't help with that, you know, communication that everybody needs to do better on. I agree. And can Jack respond to the diatribe that I had? No. Jack? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, see, that's what is interesting is what can we do better do to communicate better? I think there's a lot of things we can do to communicate better. And Jeff, thank you for what you offered. And what Sterling said, here's, the, I'm going to address a, a couple of things there if I can. Because <laughs> what Sterling said is partially true. Yes, questions are the best way to communicate. If you can lead people through questions, you can actually help them learn better. But here's what the problem is. Everyone I've encountered here has some sort of judgment of why they shouldn't listen or why they know better. And how dare someone come on and share what they know? That's arrogant. That is 
foolishness for someone to believe that ludicrous dude if you don't see the state of the world and how urgent this world is becoming and if you can't find value for the people who are willing to share their time share freely what they have dedicated their lives to learning see this is the why the world is the way that it is because people don't appreciate wisdom they don't appreciate knowledge Jeff, what you said, what you said is what my prayer is. For whatever reason, my life transformed around me. As a result of that, my beliefs had to change. Luckily, they did. I sought God. I've been seeking to become a better man. But in doing so, I've been excommunicated from my local community. I've been online trying to establish a community or find some sort of tribe and i'm still looking but your tribe is growing it is it is growing it is growing around and so like um believing in yourself or no matter what the goal is it it works in mysterious ways like you can manifest think like things manifest in a way that um are unfathomable and, and they're not on your terms or on your reason why like maybe maybe things are going to happen to you because of the way they happen to you um you had to lose your, your your mom or i mean your wife and your your son um to to have all this happen yep it all it was all maybe through. it sounds yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, thank you, Jeff. This is what I learned. It's what I realized. I mean, really, practically, all of us, practically, we've got this logical choice. Do we want to be angry and fight and resist what the world has shown? Or do we want to accept, hey, this is the life I've got. This shit's kind of cool, man. I get to live freely, just like me, every day. Free, meaning I get to do as I choose. Anything I want to do, I can do. And so I respect the channels or things that are going on to where you're just trying to teach or, or give something back or give some service. Because a lot of us have lived, a, I mean, Jesse's 50 now. He's got, he's like one of the most like even keel, like no one cannot like Jesse. I'm, I'm trying to get up there like him, but like there's, I mean, there's aspects of life to where you choose, you've kind of been through the ringer and you, I mean, we, we laughed at our parents when we were kids, like you don't get it. Like you want to rebel and they always knew the best for us. Maybe not the, maybe not now. I don't know. Maybe not every parent. I can't speak for every parent, but the true people that care about you or love about, like, for in true love, they want the best and even better from their own life. So, like, for me, if I had a kid, I want better than what I had. And if we keep that perpetual motion going, well, like the disruptors, the people that want to, I don't, I, I just don't understand the demeaning bullshit that goes along. So especially when, when some channels are just trying to sp spread knowledge or, I mean, maybe it can just be entertainment and drama sales, but it doesn't feel good. I don't know. I, you get done with it at the end of the day and it's like, I, for me, have like a sick feeling in my stomach when I argue with somebody. I don't like arguing with people. I don't like when people are mad at me or talking shit about me. So I like to be liked, but everyone's going to criticize, right? Everyone's going to say something shitty about you. And that's something that you've had to go through on like an astronomical level that I've never <laughs> seen. Like, I've never seen bully bullying in my entire life. And... People will, well, no, people will like switch it around and say, oh, you're playing victim. No, it's just like 
dude, those fucking words matter. That shit matters. You can tell someone to be a realist about certain things. We're all adults, but it's like when you're constantly telling someone you're a piece of shit your entire life. Imagine if your your parents said that your whole life. You're a piece of shit. You're gonna believe it. My parents never said that about me. They said that I was gonna be fucking magical and, and change the world. And I, right. well, I believe. Well, it. a happy medium is probably what's best. But let's pass the mic. <laughs> All right, I'm done with my shit. I'm just going to pray. I mean, I, mean, I don't want to... You promised that you were done with it. <laughs> you said you were done. A happy medium right. is probably so what's the best. And, and we're coming up on midnight. We've been here almost four hours. We've still got over 100 people here watching live with us. Appreciate you sticking around, um, you know, here this entire time or in and out. Um John streaming to his people, Jack streaming to his people, and we're on a whole bunch of different panels. So um, appreciate the conversation. And here's where Rhiannon said, I mute myself when I go on panels because I'm respectful and I know I can interrupt sometimes. So mute is a good tool in growth. And if it's a self mute, it's just that's the way she Rhiannon's got to communicate, right? So I don't want to be doing the muting for people because I just want us to all learn to communicate better and whatever they need to do to be a part because everybody is controlling their own communication skills. And if they feel that they can learn to communicate better and they have to self mute themselves just so they don't interrupt, that's something that helps them in their, you know, communication process. And that's, you know, something that Rhiannon learned for, you know, herself. And we learned the part where you letting us go back and work out our fucking clumsy communicative skills. Uh, we learn when you let us work it out. Uh, and I agree with that. I, I saw it on other panels where when I was newer. I thought, oh, my God, how can they have all this drama? And then I saw the resolve. And then those people become friends. And I'm like, ah, that nigga's wiser than I am. I ain't, I ain't friends with none of y'all. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, I'm just playing. I uh, appreciate y'all having me. I want to dedicate my stream tonight to uh, my friend Joseph. He, he passed a couple of days ago. I, uh, met him on a stream. I met him on a stream just like this. And we talked uh, at least twice a week on the phone. We became very close friends after just a chance encounter. Yeah. And uh, he was just crazy. And he was always telling these crazy stories. And you won't think it's funny. You'll think it's shocking. But I'm going to tell you one real quick. Yes. This is what he would tell you. He would say something cr like just crazy like this, okay? He would say, I mean, come on, y'all. You, I mean, you mean to tell me you're never running late to an event or a function, a dinner, and so you just, you know, you jump in the shower with your sister? <laughs> and then we all just die, dude. Like, and he come to find out, I read in his obituary, he didn't even have a sister. He was just trying oh, to very good. So y'all can get up here and push your agenda, or you can be like my friend Joseph Cigar Review Bowls and make people laugh. Quit taking yourself so goddamn seriously. All right? Cheers. Sending love to your friend, Joseph. Uh, yeah. His soul fly, fly free now. So you know, uh, this is a lot of wild ride, bumpy ride for some, crazy ride, you know, a depressing ride. But if you can find the beauty in this journey, then, yeah. you know, you're actually doing what I think you're supposed to be doing is at least trying to enjoy whatever this is to you and your journey. Do has some really good points, man. If uh, my objective is to actually make a fucking difference, got to be a better way. I can't be up here being Paul just yelling at niggas. It's got to be a better way. And I got to examine them, right? Love that. What I've really been practicing mm -hmm. and growing is actually silence over the past year. I mean, people have been noticing my, my growth. Well, what is the growth? I'm staying silent. I'm not actually speaking up and interrupting. I'm allowing things to play out a little bit more. Well, that's not true. I am speaking up more as well. I'm just doing it from a more calm and reasoned place, I think. Yeah, uh, I think you're speaking up better when you do speak up, but you do speak up less. And for a long time, anytime you tried to talk, you constantly got interrupted, constantly. So for you having to stay silent wasn't even 
your choice. But you know, the frustration dope, part, the frustration part, now that's what you've been dealing, opposed to getting frustrated with it. You're actually allowing it and then now interjecting when you have something to say or your panel, I want to get in there opposed to yelling at people, you know, just asserting yourself, not coming out of a crazy maniac, Jack. Yeah, you'll right. see, uh, you'll see Jack just go like this. I'll be watching and he'll just, his eyes will be closed <laughs> for like two minutes. <laughs> and he's just, that's why I think he's growing out his beard. He's, he's going Gandalf. <laughs> He's going you, notice, you guys notice Jack's facial cues and because I'm on the phone, like I had to zoom in when you were doing your impersonation of him. I couldn't even see what you were doing. I had to zoom in to see that, that you know, uh, so I miss it. I see people all. So, Jack, I see you disagree. So he's obviously doing a lot of shit that people interpret that I'm totally missing. And I just zoomed back out, by the way. So I'll well, probably I mean, do some more. I mean, body language is a real it's a. It's you can it's a super it's a cute it's a super cute jack does a, a lot of very like things where you you know when he's getting uncomfortable and when he is trying to balance himself that's him controlling himself so when he gets his in his seat and starts readjusting <laughs> it starts neck cocking like yeah. you know, that's him like resisting the old jack that I mean, that's what I see. I don't. I could be wrong. Here is Jack. If uh, you want a, a clue as to when you are losing that battle, when you start saying our names, you know, flow, flow, the, hey, hey, so and so, you know, Joe, Joe, uh, you know, when you start doing that, look at it, pay attention, because you might be losing your battle with so and so, with your peace that you're trying to keep. Because that's what I predict, or I, I, and I'm a troll, so I think it's funny when you say that. I probably start smiling because I'll be like, yeah, I'm a jerk. Well, but, when you go back from like a 40,000 foot view, like we're all in the same, I would think we're all in the same, like our goals are the same. It's like we're not against each other, and like why we choose to end fight is beyond me, and it, it happens daily. <laughs> because people just want to be right or want to That's be mostly it, ain't it, man. mostly it's probably ego it's i mean it's something that we do as men i mean as men you're going to challenge other men and yeah. women can do it as well i don't want to well, we're worse at it. We're worse. I want to crush like, niggas and tear them apart, uh, and that's man shit. Yeah. And and you don't need like I understand not being a cupcake and not being a a, a weak man. Um, I'm a cupcake. I, I but but you cupcake when you need to, and you, you, yeah. when you're strong yeah. when you need. If if you don't think Jesse can get wild out, <laughs> Jesse the worst. Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Have you not Jesse. heard his stories? No, I've, no, that's what I'm saying. I've heard his story. He's that motherfucker. He'll stab. I, I don't know. He he's been stabbed. <laughs> he's been uh, stabbed. Oh, yeah, I'm saying like he's not scared. That's the thing is like if you have true faith, then you're not. You shouldn't be scared. I agree. I agree. And 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 there's no shame in being kind. There's no shame in being nice. There's no shame right in propping somebody up. There's no shame in yes. that. You know the, the the bully. You know mentality. The ego that no, you can't. The man. You know men don't do that. That's cupcake. You can't be sipping <laughs> and all that bullshit. That's just the bully mentality, right? Very That's good. Taking people, people away from their true vibration, uh, and it's much better to be. I'll kind dig it. Than it. Be a fucking jackass. Yeah, yeah, generally yeah. speaking, as a rule, if motherfucker ain't being kind, ninety plus percent of the time, he's he's on some bullshit. I mean, you, you can't tell me that none of us like if someone was getting hurt on the side of the road that we wouldn't go run and help. I, I literally mean, pull over when people are broke down. Yeah, I, I like, literally still do that to this day. It's like the, the altruistic heart is there. There's something bigger going on, and I think I'm with Jack, Jesse, and jo like. I think everyone looks at the world like it's fallen and it's just we're we could have we could have lived in the black death or world war 2 like the the world is not that bad it's not as bad as people claim it is um 
And that's you. because people are, we have more information. There is a lot of arguments, but this, this enhances, like, if we can do this, I, I mean, I, I, I just don't see, like, a lot of Is that, that to say that the world life. is getting better? Is that that argument? The world's getting better because it's not as bad as it was. It's getting better. So that is good I evidence. I don't know. Hang on, hang on, Bill. I just, you didn't finish your thought. What was the end of your thought there, Mr. Kai? I kind of lost. I kind of lost okay. it because it was. It was. It, 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 no, it was probably because Joe was about to like make sense of it, like, um, or poke a hole in my logic, which <laughs> I hadn't. I hadn't totally thought it through, but I. The point is, is that that's a both good arguments. No, I, no, I mean, the, I mean, the point. The point is, is that it can be. The reason why we don't think it is is because we we we're confined to the logic that what it's always been so it's always going to be shitty and that's why i agree with when people say that they're enabling talcott and his visions that are so big yes. that that's the whole point is like a lot of people think people are crazy until they're not what's crazy about wanting a a, a better world and then people, and then the funny uh, part is that's not what they're being accused of being crazy for. That's a bit disingenuous. All no right. one's accusing oh. him of wanting a better word. He's not crazy for that. That's disingenuous. The well, genuine, that is the genuine concept. Well, I'll let him speak for himself. He's here. Can we hold right. that one thought? I just want to get yeah. through this comment here. So this is someone from John's chat, and he said, "I logged in just to speak up here for John. You guys couldn't have been wronger. You are dead wrong. He's got." He has a lot of well-read knowledge and does full four to five hour shows often on all major spiritual astral. And then there's one more comment. Um, he says, um, logical text. He's very well read. And he does the same job on him, obviously not knowing his work. He just teaches, for example, what the Bible might say or Hindu text or Zodiac insight. Um, he's a brilliant guy. He's been on the missing. He was actually the fourth interview, not the second. He was interview four. He's been on the, the missing link three times. Love his knowledge. Love hearing about his teachings. Very, very brilliant guy. And I, I feel Joe's a very brilliant guy as well. Right. So that's why yeah. I was saddened by the miscommunication that it kind of went where it was because we could have got a lot more out of, you know, all of us could have benefited a lot more because both have you know, extremely high intelligence. I think we agreed on a ton of shit. I agree on no damn that everything he was uh, saying. And I, and I was in late, so I will be the first to admit that I don't know his work and I should look at it. All right, I'll tell you, because you said uh, that a few times. I didn't want to be the one who, who characterized what happened or anything, but it started off on a, a theory that a dude had where we were talking about something, how the meteors, how we could keep meteors away from the Earth. And the two ways he was talking about was a dome, which made me think he's flat Earth, and the other way was the electromagnetic fields uh, that the Earth creates. And I, I said, I think you're wrong there, however I presented it. Uh, if, if there's a dome, then something. And the other one, um, the field is too weak. Uh, we, that's where we started going. As soon as we went there, we never got back to where we were at. Do you have any siblings, Joe? Uh, yes, I'm uh, one of six. One of six. Okay, that's Andrea. And Youngest, in fact. Do you remember what you were going to say there? Jack is still around, but, but uh, I do need to wrap this up. Um, All right, 12, sounds 12, good. 12, 12 here. Thank you so much for everybody being a part of this. Another, you know, thank you for that, but... we have tomorrow. We've got another two missing links. Um, tomorrow we have Storm Whaling, um, a guy that went through um, near death experiences, and uh, he's going to be teaching about chakras and. You know all kinds of energy systems and then we got dr richard presser coming back for a second time we got machine lies on thursday on um, february 29th and then friday we've got boyd anderson he scored the five fastest goals in hockey history and uh he had this illuminati number five goals in three minutes and nine seconds they 
brought him into the inner workings, tried to get him to do a bunch of stuff and he ended up leaving and he wrote some books about his journey there. So just trying to bring you the best information we can. Knowledge is power. Um, the more knowledge we all have, the less power they have over us. So uh, may the source be with you all. Thank you everybody for joining um, for another interesting, uh, you know, episode, I guess, of the Missing Link panel. So we'll